So I can't be free I take the weight on my shoulders Oh, I'm excited for it today. There's a lot of news. There's a lot to get to. We've got the full crew here. FT Live, Braun, Przinsky, Kratz, Todd Father, and an announcement, if I may. And quickly, I'll tell you, Levi Weaver is going to join us. We'll talk Rangers and some other things with him from The Athletic. Jared Carabas is going to join us on all things MLB. We'll go so super unfiltered with him. Looking forward to it. And Ken Rosenthal in hour number two. But we have an announcement. This show for the First time today making a little history going live on AMP. Now, if you don't have it, you can download it, $3.99, check it out, and listen to our channel. And most importantly, Podfather, you've listened to local radio for years, right? We grew up in the uh, local radio, I think, prime during our time growing up in the New York, New Jersey area. Now we're going to bring a little bit of that love to FT. You know what we're doing at the end of the show? Talk to me. Callers. Oh, watch <laughs> out now. <laughs> Uncle, Jimmy, Uncle Jimmy can call in and ask Todd. Yo, Todd, hey, why'd you call? Why'd you say that story about me? <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. This will be my first time doing it. Hopefully uh, we don't get any crazies on there because see you later. They'll be going real quick. If we do, the word is the same word that the angels love to use, and it's dump. <laughs> we need a screener. <laughs> Listen, we do. We have a as somebody that once hosted the Jim Rome show for three hours. Did you? Yeah. Back at way back. Like you hosted years ago. it? Yeah. Oh, I got to get some me. footage of that. And had callers call in. You need to call a screener caller guy. They were nice to you? I mean, mostly. Yeah. But you still need a screener caller guy. We, person. Or girl. We, we yeah, have. person. Because there's people that will try and sneak their way on there that are going to say something just to. <laughs> just to see how far they can get what people would never do yeah. that on that note actually before we get to the news you know i go through a lot of our youtube videos and we spoke about the dodgers and the braves in the beginning of yesterday's show braves fans were out in droves with pitchforks at our segment yesterday they were so freaking pissed uh -oh. about how we were talking about first off there are a few people that that couldn't understand aj's style and they were like if you don't think that that series mattered, like why are you even talking about anything until October? Um, and, and even though there was some sarcasm, wait, 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 for real, Dodgers Braves are both in comfortable position in cruise control. It is not the same as Rangers Astros, which we're about to get to, which has real hardcore playoff implications for teams that might not make the playoffs. So yes, AJ is allowed to say that, and also they were just like, oh, we've hit Bueller before, all, all this crap. I'm like, whoa, relax. First <laughs> off, you clearly haven't watched enough FT because we think the Braves are the best team in baseball by far. So sorry for saying the Dodgers are kind of good. And also, I was looking back, I forgot. You know, J.D. Martinez comes back later this week. Yeah, and, good, and the Braves won three or four of in that offense. series, let's not forget. Correct. So I don't know what they're – we said they're good. They're they, really they good. They said that we were homering on the Dodgers. You know what? Braves fans, listen, I finished my career as a Brave. Shut up. 
<laughs> okay. I got ripped. I got ripped by the Braves on Friday because I said about the Thursday game, how I was like, ah, you know, they really got the Strider. The Braves are, you know, they need Strider to be dominant, and he wasn't that dominant. And this dude just came all at me. And they won the next night, and he's like, now what do you have to say? And I was like, well, case closed, season's over. <laughs> <laughs> I thought our, I mean, I thought my example last year, the Dodgers Padres. Yes. It was pretty good. The Dodgers yes. were 15-4 and four or something against them last year, and the Padres whooped their ass in the playoffs and sent them home. How dare That's you? That's why it doesn't mean – it doesn't – it only means something to the fans. It, to the players, it doesn't mean anything to the – because once you start in the – you guys know in the postseason it starts over. This, I mean, great. The, the Braves are the best te- – listen, the, I don't think anybody will argue with you that the Braves are the best team in baseball. Yes. I, I, I mean, I think that's pretty clear. I mean, they played a four-game series in Dodger Stadium, and but they didn't face Kershaw. And then, you know, I mean, it's like we're just saying what the facts were. It's not like we care one way or the other who wins. How dare you? How dare you, Scott? Call it, get me you in trouble. Braves haters. That was Scott's <laughs> fault. Best, I was just happy he wasn't on. Best team in baseball. You need to give them more credit. Anyway, let's charge the damn mound, shall we? We got a lot to get to. So let's start with this <laughs> Rangers Astros series. Actually, no, wait. Sorry, I'm already skipping myself. Jeez. This is why Braves fans that. hate you. Yep. You know who Here's everyone suspended. loves? <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon. Did you oh, come yeah. across him at all, Todd Father? Yes, yes. We played all star game together. We played probably a hundred games against each other, man. We very good dude, man. Love me some cutch. Let's go, baby. All right. So tough news for him. Um he's got a partial tear to his left Achilles tendon. So obviously he's done for this year, but he's already indicated that he's not going to end on that note. He had a really solid year, too, and he tweeted. He, he's he's pretty good on Twitter. I'm fine. And then, quote, t- tweeted it later on going, well, no, I'm not. Dang, this sucks. <laughs> so he's done for the rest of the year. Obviously, it's not playoff implications or anything. The Pirates have been out of it since I said they were out of it in May. But uh, <laughs> that was for you, Kratz. <laughs> um, Kutch finishes with a 112 OPS plus, you know, a bubbly league average hitter, 378 on base percentage. This is still a very effective ball player who sets the tempo for a lineup and gets on base. So he'll be back. He better have a lifetime contract in Pittsburgh. Yes. They that's just, where he wants to be. He wants to be there. I talked to him in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago. He's ha- so happy to be back there. His wife is from there. He loves the organization. He wants to finish there. So, I mean, make this like a Tim Wakefield situation, but the Red Sox were like, listen, you have a one-year – $5 million deal for as long as you want to play. I mean, it might be higher for Kutch. I don't know. But just give them the – you can come back and play as long as you want to play because we're not winning this year. We're not winning probably next year and maybe the next couple of years after that. But, they're, you know, g- give this guy his due and let him finish as a pirate and move on after that. Mm-hmm. Yep. You want him around. You want him around. Even even the years – you know, I don't know how long a rehab would be for a partial tear if it's the same as for a full tear. But – you want him around. You want this guy around the clubhouse. He's going to just bring so much out of an organization that needs positives, and he's one of those guys. One of the best. One of the best to do it. One of the best to do it in Pittsburgh. They're probably going to put a statue up of this guy over there. I mean, he's he's brought a lot to that city. I mean, even though – yeah, no, well, think about it. They, they haven't – they didn't make the playoffs for what, 20 – I'm going to say 20 years. Then they beat – when I was on the Reds, they beat us in the playoff. And um, they took, you know, Pittsburgh by storm a little bit, I, even though they didn't win much after that. But he, he did a lot for that city, and um, he deserves the best. You guys yeah. ever seen a guy blow his Achilles out? Have you ever been on the field when it's happened? Yep. No. Dude, it, it, it's like, bam! You hear it. And the dude just drops. Like, he, luckily, I mean, his wasn't like – I remember uh, Jose Contreras did it covering first. And then Jose Contreras is like the strongest, biggest dude I ever seen. And he went down like a just. <laughs> Jason Grilly in Colorado did it, and you could hear it go snap. Oh. He was going to cover first, and he went. <laughs> and he, they're they're like in the most pain, but they said it was like pain, but it it didn't hurt. They couldn't explain it. It was like when it happened, it's like someone takes a knife and just whew, chops the back of your leg, and then it like goes away, and you're just like, what happened? Yeah, they, 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 it's like shock. <laughs> gets in for him. I don't know. They, you've seen a bunch of them. They, they look back like somebody just tripped them or something. You know, they look back and they're like, what just happened? You know, did somebody just grab me from underneath my foot and nobody's there? And you're like, oh, shoot. 
It's pretty yep. much my Achilles. And that's you – I saw the, the one I think about is, is Kevin – or KD, um, Kevin Durant, when he – I think he did something to his Achilles or his calf, and he looked yeah, back and he thought right. somebody was there and nobody was there. I mean, not, it's not funny, but at the same time, you're like, it's just – it's weird. Like, never wish that upon anybody. Yeah, everybody has the same same reaction. They look back like, did I just hit myself with the bat? Yeah. Kevin – I wasn't there for Kevin Franzen. He said he was running around second base – popped i was there for ryan howards in the playoffs to end the playoffs in game five against the cardinals and he like he went to get back up like he's like oh shoot like that's embarrassing thought he slipped the reality was his foot was not connected to the back of his calf crazy mm -hmm. brutal well on the topic of embarrassing the rangers played the astros <laughs> last night and in Didn't the they first show two up, games the the angers I don't know. There, there's Angers? some letters in the name right now. They do. Austin Hedges <laughs> just closed out the game kicks. two nights in a row. Dude, poor Austin Hedges. Has his, his arm's arm. going to be sore, dude. I know. I wanted to interview him today, actually, but he would have had to do this, right, to talk to us. And I didn't want to bother him because his arm's sore. So 27 to 7 in the first two games of this series. The Astros are in first place by themselves in the AL West for the first time this season. They hit 11 home runs in these first two games. Jose Altuve had that run where He's you go like back to the previous game. Well, five he had seven five home runs in a six at bat stretch. He had a seven for seven stretch with two singles and a home run. The most crazy baseball statty part to me, Kratz, was you go back to the prior game. He had a home run in the ninth. Then he hits a home run yesterday in the first, second, and third inning. Crazy. I, I, I don't wow. like some of the swings they were taking on guys. It was like. Man, move somebody's feet, and then, and then they were hitting guys, and they were scoring. I mean, it was they were comfortable in the box, run differential through the roof. Makes you wonder, like, dude, what are they seeing that everybody else is not through the whole season? So for them, you know, sky's the limit. It looks like the same old Astros again. Here they come. Just took them a little longer to get there. Well, here's so. what I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they're seeing, Kratzy or Todd. You know what they're seeing? They're seeing a Rangers team that's beat. They're Fire. beat. They're shook right now. I mean, you call it whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, I told y'all I did the game. I'd done their game two weeks in a row, and I did their game on Saturday. There's just nothing there. They're out of steam. It's like energy wise. I mean, even talking to Bochy, he's like one of the most positive dudes in the world. He's like, I don't know. We've had meetings. We've done <laughs> this. We tried that. We've done the hit, no hit, da blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know, after their top four, three guys and throwing Garcia four in their lineup, it's like, the bottom of their order has been awful. And then their pitching. Duran, Tavares, and uh, uh, I forget the fourth, third guys in the box. 789 has been awful. And their bullpen, obviously, has been awful. And, and they, you know. Their the starters, starters aren't giving them length either. They're I mean, giving them any length. So didn't it's like, have it in his return. I mean, they need Matt. Dude, talk about a pitching matchup. But they need Scherzer tonight. And coming off the forearm thingy, he needs to go. He needs to give them seven, eight. I don't know. Nine? This is what you. This is what you made the trade for. This is why you gave up Acuna's brother. This team is in a four and fourteen stretch. Their bullpen ERA during that time period is about seven and a half. I mean, they are falling apart so much so that they're not in a playoff spot. That's hard to hear. They were in first what, place. Was it for a month ago? The season. What was it about? I think you guys were. We were all on together. Maybe it was around the All-Star game. We did a thing where which division leader is most likely to make the playoffs and not. And I think we all said at the time, I don't know, but we all were like, oh, the Rangers are going to make the playoffs. Not me. Now you're like, wait, we're, how dumb were we all? No, nah, I've been on the uh, Mariners train. Yeah, but we still thought because they had like a seven-game lead yes. at the time, we're like, oh, they're going to at least get in. Right, we thought wild card. Somehow. But, hey, Toronto – shoved with Bassett against the A's as they should. They've got the easy schedule this week. They're taking advantage. The Rangers don't. They're running into a smoking hot team as it is. Even if the Rangers were playing good ball, the Astros are coming off a bad sweep against the Yankees, yeah. but still they they can score Kratzy. I mean, the time period I'm looking at is go back to July 26th. Houston is averaging over six runs per game since that time period. Do you know why I picked that date? That was when... Altuve came back from the injured list. He's a he's a game changer. The, I mean, the dude hits hits balls to right, center, and left. Four four home runs and four at bats. And the thing, like you said, I was going to refute what you said, but then you changed it. You're like, oh, the Astros are hot. 
they just got swept by the Yankees. And then they come in here and have just the first two games annihilate them. This is why I chose, this is why I chose my game as the lock without ever choosing <laughs> what the outcome is going to be, because I need you need to see Max Scherzer go 110 pitches tonight. And the Astros, Verlander kind of he wants he wants this game to finish. If they lose tonight, I feel like the Rangers, they're gonna have a tough time just crawling out of this because of just the mental strength it takes to try to get over a sweep to the team leading your division. Did you um did you happen to say Yankees? Are you you are you thinking they have a shot to get back in? No. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I, hey, seven and a half. You never know, bro. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, can we dump? Can we dump? Can we hit the dump button? Hey, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> hey the only good thing about the Yankees right now is their record. Hey. <laughs> 69 and 69. <laughs> And they haven't been 69 and 69 since, guess what year? 1969. 1969. No. <laughs> I swear. Giggity. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's good for six right there. No, no one loved that number more than Brandon Belt bringing it up last week. If you missed that interview, <laughs> type it into YouTube. Oh, but, God almighty. Uh, the, the last layer of this that we'll swing back after a break and talk about is – the Verlander versus Scherzer matchup and relationship, and the fact that we haven't had this before. I mean, this is prime time, big ass game. This matters. Unlike the Braves Dodgers series, this fucking matters. <laughs> you know what I want to hear? I want to also want to hear Todd's thoughts on what Ellie did last night in that game. I want to hear what Todd has to say. In the walk off? Yeah. Did you see what he did? Yeah, we got to talk well, about. Yeah, it. that's in, that's what yeah. he said. We got to we got to talk. I want to hear Todd's we'll thoughts. We'll look at there. look at AJ stealing my job, coming up with teasers. All right, so let's look at the poll question, and then we'll swing back. Who will win the AL West? Nice and simple: Astros, Mariners, or Rangers? Watchstadium.com slash foul territory, or the QR code on your screen if you're watching on Stadium. We'll swing right back and go over Ellie's comments and Verlander and Scherzer talking about each other. Well, also, can I piggyback off that? Because are you talking about the NLCS series, yeah. Kratzy? Okay. So here's my thing, Matt. And, and, hey, great to have you on. We appreciate it. You are the first, and we'll have them all over the next few months. First current GM to join us on FT Live. couple players per day, and it's been awesome to have many of your brewers. And we can see why the team is thriving from a, a clubhouse chemistry perspective, too, of course. A lot of great personalities. So that series against the Dodgers, 2018, last time you guys won a playoff series, this team has been a consistent winner. It's not a super high payroll team. What's the secret to consistent success in Milwaukee? But also, how badly are is your front office burning to keep advancing in a playoff series with that rotation and run prevention that you have set up this year? Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. I mean, look, we're I'm certainly thrilled to be a small part of this. I mean, we have a, we have a tremendous team of people here, and it starts with people. Honestly, I think that's that's the name of the game when it comes to success and. Um, you know, our ownership has supported our, our, our team, our, our front office, our coaching staff uh, in a great way. And so, you know, it, it started, uh, you know, all, many years ago, um, you know, even before I got here, honestly. So we, we just have a really good group, a great culture, uh, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it, you know. And, and I think at this point, you know, like, like you've talked about, we've made the playoffs here a number of years in a row. And I think we're looking to advance uh, even deeper, you know, obviously missing last year was a, a tough a tough situation for us. And, and I think it just galvanized us a little bit more even to, to want to get back there. And, and I know Kratzy was a big part of it for us uh, back in 2018 and, and he knows what it's like and, and we have a great culture and we just want to build on that. And now back to foul territory. Back on FT Live with all the talk about the Yankees' current record, we figure perfect timing to do a little. That's what he said. <laughs> uh, there it is. If you're watching right now, very nice graphics. So Chandler Rome with the tweet before facing Scherzer, Justin Verlander said he agreed 100% with Scherzer's comments from last month. 
that the two were on, quote, a better page than ever. And I'll read it. It's a little lengthy, but bear with me. I don't know if it's just two older, wiser men or what, but I look back at our time in Detroit, and not that it ever became really bad. I think some of it got blown out of proportion, but it was just two highly competitive guys trying to find their foothold in the game and were very competitive and had very strong opinions about the way that they went about their business. I think looking at each other now through a different lens, it's two guys who do go about things differently, but there's more than one way to be successful. I can't speak for Max, but for me this time around, we had a good conversation about the way he sees things, the way I see things and how that can be beneficial. Whether you take one thing or 10 things or something, anything from each other to make you more successful, that's what it's about. I think we've always been a couple of guys who like to share our opinions with some of the younger guys and try to help them. And it's a little weird sometimes when you're both very successful. Sometimes those opinions aren't necessarily wanted. Now I think with the different lens that I had for sure, and I'm sure Max would say the same, we just had a mutual appreciation for one another and it wasn't so competitive. That allowed us to have better conversations and learn more about each other just as human beings. We got along very well. AJ? I mean, they work out together in the offseason. I know that. Yeah, they and also work out down in West Palm Beach, Jupiter area. But listen. Pre-money, post-money. Post that's how I read it, too. Listen, I, I mean, it hasn't really been documented, but they didn't really get along very well. I, I think it has Detroit. been documented. That's how, that's how yeah. they've been Yeah, and then asked. they, that was the big, that was one of the big questions. Remember when Verlander signed with the Mets? Like, oh boy. How, and from what I had heard, they started when working out together, they became better friends. I don't know if friends is the right word, but they became better relationship-wise with each other. And then you saw Max's, I mean, that was a long-ass quote to say, but I mean, he could have said, yeah, we're friends. And could have done like Anthony Rendon and be like, no, I'll blow Inglace, friends, amigos, and walked out. <laughs> well, JV is preparing for his <laughs> next career. He'll be a broadcaster, maybe. Probably, yeah. But it's it just, it was it was good for to hear them come out and say that because I think there had always been questions about that. And then people questioned the Mets clubhouse. And Scherzer was shut that shit down real quick. He's like, listen, boys, no, we were good. We just didn't play very well. So good for Max, good for Justin. And listen, time to move on, but I can't wait to see him pitch against each other tonight. Yeah, I, and I think – when he talks about it, it was two young guys that were on that dominated on the scene and were very good. And I think at the same time, you, you want what's best for the one guy. You want what's best for him and you want what's best for yourself. But at the same time, you're looking at it like, you know, I need to prove something. And I feel like that's what that's what I'm taking out of it. They both wanted to prove that they were the best. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, too, as well. And that brings out the best in both guys. And again, yeah, they're older, they're wiser now, so now they can have an understanding of how they started, what they thought about, and now who they really are in life. And they're trying to help out the younger guys. Like you said, it was drawn out in a big paragraph, um, so that makes you think a little bit. But yeah, I think in the beginning of their careers, they both knew how good they were. They wanted the best out of each other, but especially they wanted the best out of themselves moving forward. I want one of them to be honest and – tell what their feelings were back in the day, not mm. how they feel now. I want to like, were they like, Oh man, you know, super jealous when he won the Cy Young and MVP. Oh man. I was super jealous when he went to Washington and did that. You know, I want to hear what, what drove him. you know, it was like, ah, oh, I hated his voice or every time I see him <laughs> in a clubhouse, I didn't like him. You know, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear because that I think you can, you can learn from too. If you talk about like teaching young guys, you can learn from because that's rare in baseball that some that guys have this like pitted against each other mentality by the time you get to the big leagues. You know, through college, it's like Johnny College where it's like, oh, that dude's trying to take my spot. I'm the I'm the Friday starter. He's the Sunday starter. You know, that kind of thing. And then it's like low A, high A, double A. It kind of gets whittled out. And it's rare that you have that at the big leagues. It's also rare that you have two Hall of Famers on the same team coming through their arbitration years. Also, don't forget, when Scherzer came over to the Tigers, JV was the alpha. Yep. I mean, Justin was the alpha on the pitching staff. I mean, they had Cabrera and some other dudes in the field. But Verlander had been there for a while, and he had taken him to the World Series, and he had already done a lot of things. So Scherzer's coming over as a younger-ish guy. And so he's probably like, listen, I'm just as good as you and I'm going to prove it. So, I, I mean, we're not – we weren't there. We don't know. But I'm thinking like, you know, and I think Max kind of admitted this in his quote, like we were competitive and I was trying to keep up with him. And JV's like, stay down there, little boy. You know, I'm still the man here in Detroit, right? <laughs> like, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. And that's not a knock on Justin at all. Nope. That's just the way big leagues and in, in, in professional sports happen. Like if you go to a team and you're the new guy and you have an alpha – 
whoever that alpha is, they're always going to be like, until I seed my spot, this is my team. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's fine. That's the way it is. And that's the way it should be. Cause you need that alpha. Miguel Cabrera, I guarantee you they trade, they, they certain guy comes over, whoever it is. And he's like, I'm still fucking Miguel Cabrera. I got yeah, me. well, it was a problem back then because in 2014, that team was stupid talented. That team had 13 and 14. Miggy, V Mart, Prime, both. Castellanos, JD Martinez, Verlander, Scherzer, Porcello, Price, Porcello, Corey ridiculous Hunter, roster. Fielder. They had and all guess those what? Because I, I would be in the playoffs. That's when I would hit the road and be with stationed with one team. I still always talk about that team because I had a friendship with a couple players there that I spoke to, including one that had joined the team at some point during that season. He goes, by far the worst clubhouse I've ever been a part of. He goes, <laughs> it's not even close. He was like, I wouldn't even call this West Side Story or a split clubhouse. He's like, there's 10 clicks. Nobody talks to the media the right way, especially when we're struggling. He's like, this place fucking sucks. And he was like, and I feel like a loser here. And, and it was not a loser, dude. So. But think about, but think about too what the transition at that time was. 12, 13, 14, Verlander started his stuff started to go down. And Scherzer was he was starting the all-star game. Scherzer was, you know, he was lining up for that 200 and whatever million dollar contract. He was, you know, he turned down the huge contract. And at all that time, Verlander was kind of going down. So he went alpha male to the new alpha male. Then they got then they got Price, who's just who was the elite of the elite at that point, coming in and being like, "Oh, dudes, what's going on?" And I think, you know, they probably ran into that like the crossing of paths at the time. Verlander since has gone back up, and Scherzer's just stayed at that level. But that was a tumultuous time, especially if you're saying Verlander was the alpha because he was going down at that time. I want to hear some stories from that time. I mean, he was. He was the alpha. Yeah. I mean, think about David Ortiz's grand slam that he hit against Benoit in the playoff 13. Or at the cop with the one hand Yeah, up, of course. Right? I mean, that changed. I mean, the Tigers could have gone on a run for years with that team. And that home run kind of knocked them back, gave the Red Sox another World Series. But they never really recovered. Mm -mm, they did not. The only thing I will say to spin it forward, because then we got to jump to one more topic here, is – them being friends didn't work either. <laughs> it didn't. I mean, they had a, th Fair. this was a disaster season uh, for the Mets in a different way. But those two have been much better since moving on, which at least according to Berliner has some to do with the way that the Mets were preparing game day pitching. No? It just didn't play very well. I hate Edwin that. Diaz. That's why they lost. Edwin With Diaz. WBC. WBC. Yep. WBC, WBC ruined the Mets. <laughs> Damn WBC. It's always Damn. the WBC's fault. All right. So, an Ellie De La Cruz special here to finish up. That's what he said. Um, awesome walk-off win for the Reds. They hang around. Comeback kids. 44th comeback. A 7-6 walk-off win over the Mariners in the 10th. Christian Encarnacion Strand bringing home Ellie, who's just a speed demon on the base paths. Ellie post game when asked if he thought the Reds had the game one when he got onto first. Quote, I already knew those guys are <laughs> going to try to get me out, but they don't have a chance. I'm going home anyway. Asked if he had any second thoughts since he got thrown out earlier in the game. Ellie goes, quote, it doesn't matter if they get me out of 20 million times. I'm still going to be aggressive anytime I go out there. I just know that I'm going to be better than them. Todd, I praise you for training Ellie on his media. Um, oh, availability because he is an instant freaking soundboard. I actually watched a little thing on his upbringing, and, and he had a you know he had a pretty tough in the DR. So he's probably like, fuck, fuck this, I've, I've dealt with more. I'm, I'm gonna have a good time. Plus, nobody's kicking his ass. He's freaking huge. Yeah, they the media loves <clears throat> they love the stuff that he brings out. Um, I think he was just excited. I, I think after winning a close game like that, seven to six, um, you know. You get excited. You say some things. I think, you know, he might, you know, I don't mind what he says, but sometimes you might need to tone it back just a little bit, you know. No. No. Screw no. That, dude. Keep it going. No. Hell no. Okay, no. Then. Let it eat. But, no. I, but I promise he was lying. If he got thrown out 20 million times, that would be a record, and he wouldn't be running. Well, he'd be so tired he couldn't run if he ran. If he that would be a lot of run. Bases. Yeah. Listen, most of, most of it is, is good. You know what I mean? You, they're saying you might – 
the guys are going to try and get me, but they have no chance. I mean, everybody has a chance. And I, and I think he'll understand that. <laughs> he didn't have a chance I, last night. They were, he was scoring on that ball no matter no what. Doubt. That was a good no, throw by no doubt. No doubt. Oscar Hernandez, that was actually a good throw. I mean, granted, it was a – but, I mean, he had no chance. And then I love this. I just know I'm better than them. I mean, yeah. like, that is awesome. <laughs> I just know I'm better than anyone. I know, I know I wouldn't be able to say that. Uh, Kratzy, you probably would definitely wouldn't say that. I would definitely say it. It would okay. be the most <laughs> bold-faced lie of all time. <laughs> but you say it with your chest and be yeah. like, yeah! Yeah. No, I might he, say it in a Little yeah. League game. Kratz would get challenged in the clubhouse. They'd be like, you won't say that. And you'd be like, oh, I oh. absolutely will say that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be easy. He's a young kid. He enjoys the game. I love every second of him. He got excited, and you know what? You should be. You're on, you're on the, the brink of making the playoffs here. You know what? Go ahead. Say what you got to say. But, you know, relax. You know, when he gets in the play, get, get to the playoffs first. That's, that's what I'll say. That's what I'll say at the end of the day. You do you, Ellie. You are. No, here we go. Joe you're saying Burrow that status. because you're a media guy. You love that shit. Yeah, well, plus, I mean, it's fun. Rather than him being like, you know, we're just trying to string together at bats. We're all looking one game at a time. <laughs> We're putting all of our hustle and effort. Blah, 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 I'm sleeping. Nah, Ellie's giving blah, us something blah. else, and I freaking love it. All right, we'll swing back. We're going to talk to Levi Weaver, who writes for The Athletic, uh, one of my favorite publications, The Wind-Up Each Morning, the MLB Newsletter. So we'll hit a bunch of topics with him. He also used to cover the Rangers not too long ago. So we'll ask him if we should get the obit ready for that ball club. Next up on FT. Yeah, that's the other component is, you know, how much do you think this impacts him? Because at one point, the offseason, again, I want to like reemphasize that this this is pebbles compared to what the big picture and what the criminal um, potential criminal case looks like. But this is a baseball show. This was a player that probably would have been a 100 plus million dollar pitcher this offseason based on past success, even though this year has been up and down and also his age. He's a young free agent now. I would think it's hard to imagine that he's a, whatever it is, nine-figure salary guy and that there will probably be some teams, depending on how things shake out, even even if there's not a ton to this, right? Even if it doesn't end up in, say, um, getting convicted in anything or it's a shorter suspension. I think there's some teams, Bill, that are going to say, nope, off our list, enough for us. I mean, the Nationals are a ball club, but some people pointed out publicly that immediately cut Starlin Castro before even – he was investigator or anything else. And I know he's a vet and a different kind of value to a team. But point is, I think some teams are just going to say, nope, not dealing with this. Yeah. I mean, if you go back to last winter, as we talked about, the Dodgers were on the hook for Trevor Bowers, $22 million, whether they kept him or not. Once they said, we're not going to keep him on our roster, there were 29 other teams that could have picked him up and the Dodgers would have still had to pay all but the minimum. So for $700,000, 29 other teams said no to Trevor Bauer. Julio Arias would be, as we talked about, if he is suspended, the first two-time offender, if you will, under baseball's policy. Americans like to say, give people a second chance. So the question is, did Julio already have a second chance? And now back to foul territory. FT's back on stadium and on amp for the first time for the listening crowd. And we're going to bring in our next guest. Uh, you can follow him at 3-2-EFIS. And you can see him right now, Levi Weaver joining us. And he writes the uh, daily windup in the athletic. And I'm a big fan. So, Levi, reading it every morning. Thanks for your work. I know you're hustling every day to put that together. How you doing? And we got a lot to get to. I'm doing all right. I'm uh, I'm just looking forward to talking to Todd Frazier, who I covered in 2020 with the Rangers, and it was all on Zoom, just like this. So now you get to ask <laughs> yeah. me some questions. Todd. Hey, something some we things get, never change. We get to do this in reverse. Yeah, doing, exactly. Yeah, let me, we're good. Let, 
let me ask you a question. Those cards behind you, are those yeah. real deal, or are they just, just for uh, yeah, show? Yeah. No, those are real. Wow. I got my, uh, where are we at? There we go. Here's the, the crown jewel right here. Oh, I don't my. know if you can see that very well. Oh, way. Yeah, yeah, you got to get Gibson. that thing graded, big dog. I know. I know. I actually got it really cheap on eBay. Um, I do not have the kind of, of like income to actually be paying for a Bob Gibson <laughs> rookie card, but somebody on eBay let it go for really cheap. So <laughs> yet, <laughs> nice. yet the newsletter's blowing yeah. up. So there, there was a lot that you covered for early September this week. I want to start with Shohei Otani. No, 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 dude. He covers the Rangers. Let's start with the fucking Rangers and what's wrong with that. <laughs> I'm leaving. Forget oh. the Shohei. We'll get to <laughs> Shohei. The biggest series of the damn season right now is the Rangers and the Astros. But it's and the not, Rangers it got their series. ass kicked. It hasn't been a series. I know, but I want to hear his thoughts on it. He covers them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I did. Uh, I, I have... Uh, it's funny. I, I started covering the Rangers in 2016 and they went to the playoffs that year. And I was like, this is great. Baseball writing is going to be fun forever. And then I covered the Rangers for the next what six, seven years where they were just uh, not, not great at all. It was a whole lot of not fun this year. I moved to uh, newsletter coverage and they start winning again. And I'm like, dang it. I just, I left just at the wrong time. And now this month I'm feeling pretty good about my decision. Cause it is, it is not fun times in Arlington. The bullpen is uh, is just. I mean, there, the talent in the bullpen. I think is is better than what they've been performing, but the performance has been awful. Um, and I think the I think the biggest thing for me is that like the bullpen hasn't been good all year. It was never you know it would have its moments. There would be times when it would be streaky and be pretty good. But it was covered up early in the year because the Rangers were scoring seven, eight, nine, ten runs a night. I mean, the offense was just going nuts every night. Now the offense is cold, um, and when the team's scoring two, three, four runs a night, that bullpen's not good enough to keep those leads, and it's it's bad times. Like, I don't – if the Rangers are going to go to the playoffs, which they're currently a half game out of uh, playoff position right now, it's going to have to be because their, their offense wakes back up. I don't think they have the bullpen to do it. The rotation's pretty good. Evaldi wasn't great last night in his first start back, but he's a better pitch than what we saw last night. Max Scherzer is Max Scherzer, even though he's not, you know, the max of eight, nine years ago. Um, Jordan Montgomery has been very good. John Gray has been very underrated, I think, but he just doesn't get any run support. But I think the success of this team is going to be if their offense can come back and start scoring those six, seven, eight, nine runs a night. Well, let, let me, let me ask you this real quick and simple. Are they, are they going to make the playoffs in your mind? That I don't think the Mariners right are there. as good as they <laughs> are as good as they've played. Uh, the Blue Jays are inconsistent. It's going to be close. It's it comes down to I think only one of the Mariners, Blue Jays, and Rangers is going to make the playoffs. So if one of those teams gets hot, they're in. Um, but I think only one of those three get in, and I think either one has the ability to do it. Any one two of the of three have three. the have the horses. Is, do you think it'll be two of the three? three? Yeah, it has to be. Does that, unless, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, because, Todd, unless Todd's Yankees go on a run that he's calling for. Or Jared Kyle is his Red no, Sox. No, no, no. Right, 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 right. Listen, listen. They got to play Seattle seven times before the season's over with. So that that that's right. going to be it right there. You're right. It is one and of I, those two teams because I was – Yeah, I agree I with you. That. I, don't, the, the I, I don't think Seattle's going to make – I think they, they bursted their bubble already. I agree with you. So you think it'll be the Rangers and the Blue Jays then in those last two wild card spots? I think it's going to be the Rangers and Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> and the Yankees are. Stop it. Come on. We already tuned Just a now. rookie hey, run. Listen, there's been crazy. The Rays were up like no. 500. No, stop. Listen, uh, no. 40 stop. homes in the last two weeks of the season. The Rays have been up by like 20 games, and now the Orioles are in first place. You never know what can happen. That was with 160 games to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. Dude, I want I don't want to leave. I don't want to lose Levi. Uh, we did. We lost him. It was my See, fault. Look what I, that's you did, on me. Todd. That's on me. That's you made him feel me. uncomfortable with this yeah. Yankees voodoo shit. Hey, he was excited to talk to me again. He got nervous. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> uh, that's um, on me. You know what? While we're waiting for him to come back, and we'll mix him into this conversation because some <laughs> in the YouTube chat asked for the player perspective on the important story of. Shohei Otani being so larger than life that he actually has a body double um, who replaced him yesterday for Angel's photo day. He was not available. So they brought in a body, body double, and they're going to, I guess, Photoshop 
Otani in. And then the body double is even more important than anyone else in Anaheim. And so they got security detail, which if you're watching the show right now, not just listening, you could see he left through the left field fence so that the media couldn't ask him questions. So he couldn't pull the famous no habla and glace line. Oh, my God. Dude, really it, had to be like, it had to be like a grounds crew member or somebody. But you got to be tall, too. Otani's That's what I'm like saying. 6'4". So they probably found whoever they could find just to fill in. And then they got rid of him, though? Like, they or, said, hey, you do this, and then and then we get rid of you, jersey style. Hannah Kaiser oh. wrote a great tweet. She goes, did the Angels already have an Otani body double on hand, or did they conduct a very quick Listen, imperative search? You know how they have – I think they have body doubles of presidents and stuff. Now they got mm-hmm. body doubles of Otani's. I love it. Why no, not? The guy, the guy didn't get rushed out of their jersey style. He had to go cut the grass before the game. <laughs> oh, my bad. That's on me. My bad. Have you ever heard of something like this, though? No, usually they, never. No, I've never heard of such. But I can't believe that the Angels would schedule their team picture when Otani's not there. But why isn't he there? That's what I want. Nobody knows because he don't. He know Abelos and Glaze. No. I mean, don't they schedule it kind of in advance? <clears throat> yes. No, sure, they, you know they, when they, picture day is like three, four days in advance at least, so you can yeah. grow your beard out, trim it up. Absolutely. Does I thought not picture day was like one of the, the worst picture. days. More people bitched and moaned about picture day, including me. It takes five seconds. It's still you got to get your full uniform on. You got to walk out there, and it's hard getting everybody there. The starting pitcher's oh. complaining he's got to be there early that day. Oh, Don't do that. save Don't, it. You were that save guy, weren't you? Yeah, you were that there guy. was always there was always one. There was more than one. Yeah, but thank was, you. <laughs> but there was there was definitely like guys, come on, seriously, like let's just get it done with. Like yeah. we can, you can get the picture taken. But AJ's over there. No, I haven't had my uniform on this early since I was in A ball. It's so <laughs> hot out here. That's true. true. That's a good point, though. That was true. <laughs> and then when I was with the twins, every time you got your photo taken, Burt Blylevin would give you the moon. Oh, really? <laughs> every time. That's he would nice moon of him. you. What? <laughs> back to otani for a second <laughs> you can't show up for the photo is he embarrassed to be on the no, team there's at no, don't no. even start oh cut it out scott what's Seriously. the problem wait so so todd father you show up early so does everybody else and you got one jaboni who doesn't show up and he's just been carrying the team for you know years wouldn't you be like, hey, dude, would you go up to Otani and be no. like, dude, you got to show up to the team photo? Not at all. Not at all. You say, all right, hey, you missed it. They'll put a double in for you. Let's go play a game. It is okay. what it is. Depending on what it was missed for. He's probably. Now, if he just didn't. Sh- no, if he had like a doctor's appointment or <laughs> something like, for the then, oblique then, that uh, he's getting then, checked yeah, out. Yeah, but if he just didn't show up. Yeah. Then someone should probably say something. What if he showed up? What if he was like, you know why I missed it? Because I'm sick of hearing AJ bitch about camera day, so I don't want to, I don't want to go out there. But guess what? Then he would hear it twice as bad because I'd be like, "Get your ass out there!" If the <laughs> rest of us, oh well, yeah, most of the, the time, the rest of us gotta walk our ass out there. Todd, tell him the rest of us gotta walk our happy ass out there. We're 20 <laughs> games under. We're supposed to compete. I gotta yeah. be here at one o'clock. You better get your ass here too. Yeah, most of the time you don't even know where he's at either. It's like you don't even care at this point. You're out of the playoffs. It's like ah, whatever. We got what. 20 games left. We'll, we'll put them in there somehow. That's funny, though. Body double? Never heard of it before. Never seen Never it. Seen it. I'd, I'd want to have taken my camera, out, my phone out there to take a picture of the Otani, the Otani double. Post I that bet you John. people wanted to talk to him just because Otani, anything Otani is mm-hmm. gold and people want to hear about it. And this becomes a story and you just can't stop He's covering famous now. This guy's like. This guy's like Bigfoot. Who the body it? double? There's going to be a, a documentary. Be a Big, Lock, for Loch Ness on. Monster, is he real or not? What does he do for a living? Let's Think about it. all the media in Japan trying to figure out who this guy is. Oh, yeah. The body double? Yeah. Oh, there, there's a full-on search right now. Let's bring Levi Weaver back as he's now recovered after Todd Father's Sorry. line about the Yankees' chances of making the playoffs. Yeah. But you can jump my, right in here. <laughs> on uh, my wife, I could double. not handle the hot take. You're, uh, you're yeah, good, so man. I... I heard you guys, uh, and I I had the same thought last night while I was writing. Like, that picture came out of the guy who was the body double, and I was like, I – there are many times in my life where I wish for infinite knowledge. Like, I wish I could just answer every question that I have. 
I want to know who that guy is. I want to know how he got the job of Otani body double. It's LA. They probably put something on, you know, Craigslist, or I'm sure there's some <laughs> the actors guild is on strike right now, aren't they? Somebody's you know, yeah. people have people have uh, a lot of a lot of spare time. Who is this guy? I want to know. And also the other question that I had, whose decision was this? Like I I don't know what I would have done differently. Like you have photo day, it's been scheduled. Otani can't make it for whatever reason. He's just, you know, not available. You can't have the team photo without Otani. This is probably your last chance to have a team photo with Shohei Otani. I don't know what the solution is, but they picked the most hilarious one. Uh, and and like they probably should have just done it before any media were allowed in the ballpark. But they didn't. There were media in the ballpark, but then they were shielded from like talking to this guy. So it was just enough intrigue. You know that like the one thing people in media hate and also simultaneously love is a secret they're like okay that's something for me to solve i have to figure out what's going on here there's something weird happening i'm going to get to the bottom of it they created more intrigue than there had to be but whoever's decision this was thank you priceless it was the most hilarious possible option that they could have taken (laughs) and uh and they took it and it's funny hey were you a big believer in keeping otani or trading him because i was i was big on getting his ass out of anaheim uh, so the way that I put it was that it was the logical decision to trade him. They they should have traded him. It was the smart thing to do. It would have sucked. You know, you never want to be the one who trades Shohei Otani, but that was the smart decision. I am just enough of a romantic at heart that when they were like, no, we're going all in, forks in the cannon, boys, like we are going to shoot the moon. This is very unlikely that it's going to work out for us, but dang it, we believe. And I mean, as a fan of a team, like if you're an Angels fan, you have to love it when ownership goes, you know, forget the odds, screw the odds. I, I care. I want to win. I'm going all in, even though it's probably not going to work. You love that as a fan. It's not logical. It's dumb, but cool. You know, they made the cool, dumb decision. So Angels fans probably loved it. Uh, but yeah, they, they should have traded him for sure. And then, of course, it didn't work out. So it's easy for people like me to go back and go, yeah, I said all along they should have traded him. All right, so then my next question would be, should Mike Trout go to Artie Moreno and say, I'm up, it's my turn. I'd like to try to be a winner. I've helped you guys for 10-plus years. I'll help you now with prospects. If people on Twitter are crushing me because they're like, oh, he's washed up, he's hurt all the time, he's not going to get a haul, I guarantee if you put Mike Trout out there, there will be a team that will bite. You're going to have to buy down some of the salary, but there will be a team that bites and gives you something back. Absolutely, and I think that would be – a smart move for Mike Trout. Um, but you never know with guys, you know, there's, there's some guys who want to be a single player team or single team player. They want to be the Cal Ripken or whatever. Um, I don't know why you'd marry yourself to the angels of all people for that whole entire career, because they seem to be fairly dysfunctional. Um, but you know, Hey, sometimes we all love dysfunctional people. So that, that might be what he wants. And if that's his uh, priority, great. I think, yeah, I think you're exactly right. Move on. Go to a team that is uh, better designed to win, that has uh, more logical leadership at the top. And and I'm not, not I'm not talking about Perry here. I'm, I am actually talking about Artie Moreno. He can be reliably counted on to not make the most logical decision. Um, yeah, I, I would ask for a trade if I were Mike, Mike Trout. And the Angels should do it. They they are not going to win next year. They traded a bunch of prospects to bring in Lucas Chilito and Ronaldo Lopez. Who they, hey, hey, that's you know, just, White Sox. Be nice. That's a package. Deal, hey, too. no, I'm not ripping deal. on the players. I'm not ripping on the players at all. I'm ripping on the fact that they tr- they went all in, traded prospects, mortgaged some of the future for these guys, and then two weeks later were like, never mind. You guys can go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about the salary cap, baby. All right, so Levi, you cover the sport nationally now. Um, You've gotten away from the Rangers, which at this point is good for you at the moment. What do you think is the most interesting storyline or story? Because you also read every or many of the, maybe every, um, athletic baseball articles so that you can compile them for the newsletter that you put together. So I'm not going to let you go, Otani, but you can go basically anywhere else, whether it's like some of the pretty shitty news we've gotten lately on guys like Arias and Wander Franco, some of the stars of the sport that are missing right now, kind of give you the lane to go where you want to go, where you've found things both interesting and impactful in the sport. Uh, I think the Cincinnati Reds 
are the, the, the one story that has been the most interesting to me this year. You know, it wasn't long ago that their owner was saying, like, where else are you going to go? Fans were mad, sell the team. Like, it was bad times in Cincinnati very, very recently. And all of these young guys, and of course, headed up by the uh, inimitable Ellie De La Cruz, they've just been so much fun to watch. And if Hunter Green can come back and be, you know, pretty good, if Andrew Abbott can continue to be pretty good, and then they'll have to patch it together after that. I don't think they're a World Series contender, um, but man, they're a lot of fun. And they've got so many just rookies and second year guys that the enthusiasm is great. You got Joey Votto, who is one of my favorite players in the sport, just kind of almost a grandfatherly figure at 39 years old, like playing with these young kids. Love the Reds, want the Reds to win, go Reds. Uh, and then in the American League, I think kind of a similar vibe there of a team that's got a great young lineup with uh, the, the Baltimore Orioles. And also pitching is questionable. Um, I would love, to, I would love so much to see an Orioles Reds world series. Wouldn't that like, wouldn't that be great? No, no Dodgers, no Braves, no Astros. Give me, give me the Reds. Give me the Orioles. I would love to see that. Just, no what chance. is this 1974? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I'm Do you see man. what's behind me? Do you see what's behind me on That's the wall? Give me some 1974. True. That'd be great. So who is it? So we know the Reds aren't winning. Who's winning the World Series? Oh, it's going to be the Braves. 100%. Is that boring? Did you you seem so bored about that. We're talking about the World yeah, Series bored. champions. Right. The Braves have been good for a long time now. And and good and kudos to them. And, you know, Braves fans are not going to like that I'm bored with it. But I'm kind of bored of, like, the Dodgers. I'm bored of the Braves. Bored of the Astros. I want to see somebody like the Reds or the Marlins or, you know, I'd give me the Blue Jays. I'd take the Blue Jays. Like, just somebody that we haven't seen in the World Series for a while. I think, like, I love that the Phillies went to the World Series last year. That was great. Um, I think probably is that I just, I'm easily bored and I don't want to see the same teams every year. Uh, I love parody, uh, P-A-R-I-T-Y. I love parody, P-A-R-O-D-Y also, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> by the yeah. way, have you, uh, Levi, have you heard of the 98 Brave song by Morgan Wallen? Uh, you could have put any words in the middle of that sentence, and I would say no. Have you heard by Morgan Wallen, and the answer would be no. Okay. All right, because there's a song, Morgan Wallen, 98 Braves, that talks about the 98 Braves and how they were supposed to win. Because they were the best team, and it's a great song. But listen yeah. to it next time. Now you're I've like, heard... oh, it's so boring because they were supposed to win the whole 90s, and they won one. Right. I've heard Yankee and the Brave by Run the Jewels. I've never heard of them or that. So we could just trade song recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> That's Todd's song, Yankee and the Is Jewels. Is Morgan Wallen a big deal in Texas? <laughs> Morgan Wallen's a big deal uh, yeah, all over the place. I know, I know. Uh, Levi, awesome to catch up with you, dude. Um, hope you recover from Todd's hot Yankee take. And we'll talk no, to you in a few weeks when the Yanks are in the playoffs. Absolutely. I'm ready to talk about Jason Dominguez, playoff player. Let's go. That, yep, I, that I will talk about. We'll <laughs> get to Dominguez in a little bit. Uh, Levi, thanks again, man. And also, you can follow Levi, um, like I mentioned before, at 32EFIS and sign up for free for that wind-up athletic newsletter who Ken Rosenthal is a big part of. So we'll talk to Ken later. Jared Caravis is still going to join us. And poll results coming up next. Who's winning the AL West? you think about teams calling up their players you know sooner than ever there's not exact data to this but you know what i'm talking about i mean there are guys that are 19 20 years old and some of them come up and they thrive from the jump others don't and you know our mostly player run show here likes to go through how some players can overcome some early adversity and sometimes teams are like eh, i'd rather make sure that he's really in a good spot before i bring him up because i don't want him to be sent back down how do you balance that with someone like Jackson and just anybody that you're bringing up that's got high potential that you do you like do you worry oh if he struggles for a couple weeks like and we we end up sending him down again it could crush him yeah it's a great question I mean I, I we certainly don't have a formula for that you know and and there's it's it goes probably player to player I mean the one thing I'd say is that you know, we've, we've tried to be aggressive with young players you know when we had Mitchell here who unfortunately got hurt but Joey Weimer Sal Freelich uh, Bryce Terang, you know, we've, we've pushed a lot of guys here that are young uh, to the big leagues, you know, very soon. And, and we think it is a good challenge for them. You know, at the same time, we've also had to option really good players going back to guys like Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta, you know, and 
had that same conversation with Bryce Terang this year when he, when we optioned him. It's like, look, you know, you 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 came here and and look, there's more to work on, you know, and and that you're not the first great player to be optioned, you know, and and we've optioned other great players, and it is a the, the good ones, you know, respond. And, and honestly, the, that's that's the thing that, you know, they're probably going to be upset. And anybody that ha- happened to be optioned, you probably don't want them around, um, you know, and, and it's really a credit to those guys to bounce back, learn from it, grow, and then come out better on the other side. And now back to foul territory. Back on FT Live, poll results, obviously, people said Astros winning the AL West. I thought that's where people would go. I'm actually surprised Mariners and Rangers are pretty close right now. So let's get right to our picks because we talked too much earlier. So your bet MGM locks for Wednesday. And first, let's recap. Our FT heater banged, okay? If you want a promo boost every Tuesday, just hit that. And Kratzy drew welcome. it up. You're welcome. Cubs won. Hen- uh, Kyle Hendricks hit his, his K prop. I've won six locks in a row in 11 of my last 13. <clears throat> How you doing? Oh, I don't care about Jesus. Let's go, baby. I'm going to go first. Yankees money line, since they're going to need to win basically every game, Todd Father, to get themselves back in the mix here. Yankees money line coupled with Clark Schmidt, four plus Ks. Um, the offense is looking good. They won five one yesterday. They've won four in a row. I think the infusion of young talent is helping even the veterans get going a little, like DJ and John Carlo, Matt Manning mid three ZRA. But I think Clark Schmidt bounces back and he's going to hit the K's uh, four. He's hit that in five of his last six starts. All right, you go because I'm talking too much. Going with Kratzy today, man. This is a Kratzy pick. Real simple: Philadelphia Phillies money line playing in San Diego. They got a chip on their shoulder. They're ready to rock here. This is for you, Kratzy. Yeah, and they got smacked yesterday, Kratz. We'll yeah, they did, but I didn't, I didn't really care. They weren't playing all their good guys. I needed them to score one more run. Daggone it. Freaking 8 nothing. I needed a ninth oh, no. run. Anyway, I'm going max. Six-plus strikeouts, plus a walk. 17 of his last 18 games. He's done both of those things, and it's a big game. And all I need is Verlander, 4Ks. It's paying plus 110. Verlander's gone 4Ks. 12 of his last 15 games, lock it in, 330. I'll put down 300 to win 330. I don't, we don't, we don't have time for AJ's. Yeah, mine's real simple. Everybody needs to do something in the Braves game, (laughs) just Cardinals game. Just Acuna Harris, one hit, Strider, eight Ks, two hits, one walk. Hudson, two Ks, oh one walk. I'm putting down 300 yeah. to win 900. And Boom! Otherwise, the bonus code is foul 200. <laughs> uh, put down at least 10 bucks. You receive $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome, on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. See you on hour two of FT Live.
second. What's good, baby? It's Braun Krasinski, Podfather, Kratz. It's FT Live. And again, want to remind everyone that we are now on AMP because everyone loves us. So you can call into the show later on at around 2.50 Eastern time to ask us a question live. Prepare yourselves. We'll okay? even answer in Spanish too. Will we? That'll be you. <laughs> now then we'll just hang up on them. Deleted. And in hour number two, we're going to talk to Jared. Now, now it's in my head. Well, we're going to ask him. That's the first question. We're, we're, we're about to ask him. He's ready, right? Uh, and Ken Rosenthal will join us after that. I know how to say Ken. All right, let's bring him in right now. Um, the host of many things, including the Baseball is Dead podcast, name redacted pod. Jared, Jared now I'm feeling It's Carabas. It, it's Carabas. It's Carabas. Yes, I yeah. love their chicken Marcella. <laughs> Stop. It's Carabas. <laughs> did I say, say Carabas earlier? I did, right? All right, well, now no, I got you, you it. Said- Carabas. Carabas, 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 Carabas. There we go. He's not, he's, he's, not, it right. he's not happy about it right now. He's, he's not. not happy. No. So I, when I, I worked at Barstool for like seven years, and Dave Portnoy called me Carabas for like seven years, so oh, it kind of confused the entire country. And uh, <laughs> so I, I've basically been spending like the last so and so years correcting people because of him. He's an idiot. That's his okay, fault. No, I wanted to know your thoughts on him because now I'm, I'm, I'm he intrigues me. He's I mean, obviously, you're okay. <laughs> in a good way or bad way? I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing? He's a rich. No, nah, I love Dave. Dave's great. Dave's great, but he just he made my life miserable because now no one knows how to say my name. But he's uh, he's a genius. It was uh, it was interesting working for him. I-, I would say that my work ethic was created because of him. Because if 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 your boss and the guy that's the owner of the company is working all these crazy hours and he's working during the week and he's working on weekends, then what's your excuse? So that kind of like created my work ethic. That's cool. I respect that. Dude, I, by the yeah. way, first of all, I told Scott, he DM me on Instagram the other day and made my life. Why? He just did. Are you a big fan? I, I think he's funny as hell. And then second of all, the, what he did to that guy the other day, the pizza guy was freaking hilarious. I didn't see it. Oh, I'm not man. a super fan. Like I'm you. not either, but it was just everywhere. What on did he want from you, by the way? Oh, we, we're both Tottenham fans. Oh, oh, so soccer he, talk. Yeah, no, soccer no, talk. none of yeah. that. All right, let's no. get to the important. Right, now let's stuff. get back. Now so we can. Jared. Now I'm done. We okay, get back. so Jared, we we've been and we've talked on other platforms back in my MLB days, but um, we were talking trying time. to get Jared. Carabas. Carabas. No, I'm good. One time fix, I'm good to go. So, Jared, the Boston Red Sox. Part of why you know this was the perfect time to bring you on was we like to do obits when the season's done. Are we sure. still cool doing an obit today? Yeah, yeah, I think we are. Uh, I think last night was kind of like a tipping point, maybe uh, sure. losing in a walk off to Tampa. But I've kind of been saying that when they got swept in August by the Blue Jays, then that's when the ship hit the iceberg. And when they got swept by the Astros, that's when the ship actually sank. So, yeah, I'm comfortable saying that uh, that the season is officially over, but that doesn't mean that they're not a watchable baseball team. They can definitely play spoiler big time down the stretch. But, yeah, no, it's 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 an R.I.P. situation for sure right now. I want to make sure you're on one one side or the other of the fence here. We got to make sure like are we because we're not burying somebody that still has a pulse. Are we burying them? No, we're burying them. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's over and done with. the The whole thing about this Red Sox team is they were up and they were down the entire season. Like they were points where they lost a series to the Rockies or they lost a series to the Oakland A's, and you're sitting there thinking, "Well, you can't get too upset about it because they'll probably just win their next five. And then they would. Like they they never had a streak where you thought like this team is an abomination. And then they never really took off to the point where you thought, all right, now we go like this team got back Chris sale and story and all these guys. And like, now they're going to take off. They never really did. They've kind of just hovered around mediocrity. Uh, I think that baseball fans will often look at, you've got playoff teams and then you suck and they don't give any credence to teams that are somewhere in the middle. The Red Sox are somewhere in the middle. They're not a playoff team, but they don't suck. They've just kind of hovered around like five, seven games over 500. They're a formidable opponent, opponent, but they're just not a playoff team. Is it going to make it 
uh, worse for you, knowing that the Yankees are going to have a better record at the end of the year, too? <laughs> you know what? I don't. I'll take you up on that. If you want to take some action on that, I'll, I'll take some action <laughs> oh, on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't. Well, we'll have, we'll have to talk after the segment here. You and me. Yes. Yes. No. Big no. Fan, no. By let's the way. do this now. We're right <laughs> here. Let's do it right now. Yeah, let's do it right let's now. Let's not do it later. We're not. I mean, listen, listen. 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 They're, they're Three and what? And a half games. Three and a, I mean, you got to give me. You got to give me something. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's. I mean, a lot what do you want to do? do we, are we are we doing steak dinner? Are we talking like jersey let's, swap? Are we doing cash? Like, what do you you tell me? What no, you want to do? We'll figure it out. But the Red Sox will finish ahead of the New York Yankees. Right, let, 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 let's, no, I got you. Way. I got it. I got it. <laughs> we'll we'll do a steak dinner at, at the block here in uh in Monmouth County, man. One of the best steakhouses in Jersey. You come down here. Done deal. I love Jersey. One of my friends, uh, Pat Light, former pitcher for the Red Sox, he yes. was horrendous. He's terrible. He owns a bunch of bars in Hoboken. Uh, I would love to go see him. He is a bar owner because of how terrible he was at baseball. So I have to go visit him, and then we can do the steak dinner. I'm that warning you, though, good. Jared. It is still a lengthy commute from Hoboken to Tom's River, <laughs> taken from someone who's all over the tri-state area. What do, what do we got, Todd Father? Without traffic, hour and a half at least what to get to tom where, where you're from no so Tom's river to hoboken no we're talking yeah we're talking a good hour and 25 but yeah. I, I mean on a good day but where the steakhouse is for me that's a 40 minute drive so it's kind of north jersey too as well True. so it, it's not the, i'm it's from not the, i'm or, from boston so it takes oh, an hour well, and 20 yeah, minutes to get from boston to boston so i don't it's not a big deal to me <laughs> hey well, right, take, so, I will take you up on that one. Yeah, and no, yeah. I'm in on that, by the way. Dude, my it. game. So I have a game. I do the Red Sox Yankees next Thursday. Yeah. For Fox. That game just got a whole lot more interesting now for me. There you go. That there whole you go. Yeah, because of this, these in Fenway. Oh, man, now I'm going to be locked in. Yeah. You absolutely hate the Yankees, and I know you do. Me? You know what? Yes. I used to hate the Yankees when they were more of a threat, but they're just not really that oh, much of a threat anymore. <laughs> you, know? Like, uh, you know, Todd, I mean, listen, man, I'm 34. I'm not 75. I don't really see all the championship uh, nonsense that they keep talking about. In my day, the Red Sox have won all the World Series. They've no won doubt. the no, most World si since 2004. They've won more World Series titles than any organization in the sport. And I was in high school for that. So when I was a kid, maybe when I was 10, the Yankees had their little dynasty, but I was too busy playing with my wrestling action figures to care about that. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, touche, right. touche. So, Jared, let me ask you this then. Before I get back, and I have a question too about the, the way the current roster is constructed and their weird trade deadlines. But overall, as a Red Sox fan, are you happy? And are Red Sox fans a little bit spoiled in general because of the success that's been had in Boston with all of their teams? Because what Boston does is they're volatile as hell, right? It's like, we win a World Series, and then you'll have some last place and some mid-range, and we're all over the place. But they are putting together titles over these last, whatever, 15 years. So should Red Sox fans chill a little bit when they do have some downtimes, or are they um, justified in saying, what the fuck, how'd you let Mookie Betts go? It, we're definitely it's both like we're justified in being upset because you are the Boston Red Sox under no circumstances should you have Mookie Betts playing for the Dodgers during his prime years that part of it like you can complain about that but when you have these losing seasons like I always say like I I learn a lot from losing seasons and it kind of charges your fan battery in a way. Like I think if you just win all the time, like look at like the Yankee fan base, not to make it about them again, but there were points where the fans wouldn't even show up until October. It's like, all right, like that's, or even like the Patriots. If I, if I want to take the, the Yankees out of it, like Patriots fans, like we don't even, we can't even feel something until the, uh, the, ch the, the, AFC championship game. Like that's like the first game of the season for Patriots fans, or it was during the Tom Brady times. So, for as much as losing seasons suck and and they're miserable, especially for me, uh, I I think that you need those and and I sit through all of them. I I've watched every single pitch of every single Red Sox game uh, since 2003. Like I was in like eighth grade or freshman in high school. Like I've watched every single pitch of every single game. So I like to sit there and let all the bad times sink in. I'm gonna complain about it, but at the same time, I you almost have a a, a level of appreciation for it because. If you won every single year, like that's boring. Like it takes away all the excitement. Like the Atlanta Braves have had like this nice little run. One of my best buddies is a Braves fan. He's like, yeah, like, you know, like we're, 
we've got like a 700 winning percentage, but it's like, all right, wake me up for the playoffs. Like they don't even enjoy the ride of the regular season anymore. Like as a Red Sox fan, like, yeah, four World Series titles since 2004, but I would love to have a September of meaningful baseball. Like I'm not even talking championship or ALCS appearance just to be relevant in September is where I'm at. And they just won in 2018. So yeah, it kind of just, it helps with the fan element of it. All right. That's why they call you guys spoiled mass holes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause you guys are spoiled mass holes. Cause Oh, I remember when the Red Sox played against the Red Sox before they won. Oh, we'll never win. Then they went in 2004 and they became the biggest mass holes of all time. <laughs> when you went to Fenway. I mean, and now they're spoiled. Because of Brady, the Celtics. That's the Patriots. The Patriots, it's definitely the Patriots. Because you have this God complex of like, it, the second, like, because you couldn't say nothing to us. If the Red Sox fell out of contention before September, we'd be like, who cares? It's football season. Like, we're just going to be in the AFC Championship. <laughs> the Bruins, I mean, the Bruins, for a while, they're winning every damn thing. Right. Going to Boston, they're like, oh, we're going to win every sport this year. They're like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Can't touch us. Now you can. Now we're very touchable. Right. And, and so the question is, What's the problem here and what do you see them doing going forward? I don't need like specifics unless you want like, oh, we need Otani or something. But I mean, for example, one of our fans in the chat right now, Luke goes, here's my question. Are the Red Sox Fenway Sports Group's third favorite team now because they're showing the love and money to Liverpool and the Penguins? What about the Red Sox? Yeah, so uh, I, in addition to doing the podcast, I also do a show on Nesson. So now I get accused of being like a John Henry apologist or a team kiss ass or whatever. <laughs> but at they, the Red Sox had a fan fest back in January and I was the moderator for it. I asked John Henry point blank to his face. I said, you know, you have the Penguins, you have Liverpool. Like, do the, are the Red Sox just another team in your portfolio? Like, do you still care about the Red Sox? And he went like this and he looked at his watch. And some people took that as how much time do we have left in this thing? Like, get me off the stage. I took it as how long have I been here for? Like, I've been here for 20 years and you're asking me if I still care about the Red Sox. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely think that this is a make or break off season for them. It's tough because the pitching in the in the free agency market isn't going to be great. But the what the Red Sox have done now, or what Heim Bloom has done, is taken the worst farm system in baseball and made them number five. Baseball America says they have the fifth best farm system in baseball. So you've kind of locked in a lot of different pieces at the big league level where you've got some pretty highly ranked prospects that are going to be blocked at the big league level. So you're going to have money to spend because they got under the luxury tax, which is ultimately what cost the Mookie bets in the first place. So you're under the luxury tax. You can spend money and you have a ton of prospect capital so you can make these trades. And that's what Heim Bloom was hired for, right? Like they were like, Hey, where can we get a nerd? Like, Andrew Friedman, like Andrew Friedman is a nerd that has money. Heim Bloom was a nerd with no money. We made him a, a nerd with money by bringing him to Boston. He hasn't worked like that yet. So this is the off season that he has to prove like, hey, I'm from the Andrew Friedman coaching tree and you're going to find out why. So is this a successful season? Everybody that comes on from Red Sox Nation, is this a successful season where, oh, see, we told you for the ownership. Yeah, we, you know, we didn't need to spend money. We... We just, we did well. Or are they going to look at it like, oh, wow, we didn't spend money and we're a few games over 500. We can, we can squander in mediocrity. So the answer to that question is it depends on who you ask. Because uh, I think if you were projecting, like already, I think they've passed the Vegas over under. I think it was like 77 and a half. So like they're going to pass that. Uh, but if you're the Red Sox and you're saying we're going to fall somewhere in the 84 to 86 win range, they could fall in there uh, and still miss the playoffs. Like last year, maybe 86, 86 wins gets you in the playoffs. This year, it's going to take 90. So it, it depends on what your goal is. Was your goal to make the playoffs before the season started? Because if it is, then that you it's a failure. But if you're saying like, we kind of put together a roster right now where it's an in-between year where you've got Tristan Casas, a rookie at first base, Jaron Duran, wasn't even really thought of in spring training. He only got time because Adam Duvall broke his wrist like three weeks into the season. Um, Rafael Devers, first year of a big contract. Like Connor Wong, another piece of that Mookie Betts deal. There's a lot of like different pieces where it's like, we got to figure out what we've got. Brian Bayo, someone that uh, is a big piece of what the Red Sox have moving forward, also in a rookie, <clears throat> rookie season. 
So you can break it down element by element and say, yeah, in some areas, it was a success. In other areas, the rotation, first and foremost, Corey Kluber was the opening day starter. That's a huge failure. The dude, I just saw a report the other day, like, oh, Corey Kluber's coming back soon. Why? Like, for what? Like, the, there's no there, there's no chance of making the postseason. He was awful. All due respect to his his trophy case, but none of that happened in Boston. Red Sox fans don't owe him anything, and he doesn't owe anything to the Red Sox. Chris Sale, another year of, of time lost due to injury. So that's like in, in certain areas, like, yes, there were little successes and there were also ultimate failures. So, yeah, it it depends on how you view it. If it's talking about where they're going to fall in a win range, they kind of fell right where we thought that they would. So I don't know that I call that a success. A success to me is making the playoffs and they're not going to do that. I, I agree 100% making the playoffs. That's successful to me as well. I want to bring up two guys, Tristan Cassis and um, Jaron Duran. I played with them in the USA qualifiers. I, I People don't understand how fast Jaron Duran is. Like He's just one of those guys that if you just let him go, I know Adam Duvall got hurt. He took off. You know He did okay, came back, and then they let him kind of go a little bit, and he's been taking off. Same with Tristan. He started to struggle a little bit in the beginning. Those are two guys who I expect, and I want your opinion, you expect to, you know, be not only, not leaders, but guys that they're going to lean on a little bit next year. I would, would you agree with me? Uh, yes. With, with Tristan Casas, this is a dude that uh, he's built different. I know we throw around that term, but he is quite literally built different. He got drafted in, in the first round in 2018 and we interviewed him before he even signed with the Red Sox. And I remember the interview, it was over the phone and I'm looking at the dude that I'm doing the, my co-host and we're looking at each other. Cause he's given us these answers. Where we're like, this isn't him. Like we're, <laughs> we're being pranked right now. <laughs> and we almost didn't run the interview because we were like, I don't think that this is actually him. It was him, but he was just given these crazy answers and come to find out like, that's just, that's just who he is. He's a weird cat. He's a different cat. He's built different, but he has such a mind for baseball and he's out there, he's doing different things. And I just love to watch him from afar. He's a big piece of what they have going forward. I think entering play the other day, he was like fifth in the American League in OPS. Um, and that was after a slow start. So imagine what a full season of him figuring it out at this level is going to look like. The hype was there. And I think right now, if you were going to complain about anything or tinker with anything moving forward, it's the defense, which isn't even bad. I, I don't know how you guys feel about defensive metrics. They don't love Casas yet, but he's not a liability. And, and, and based on the defense that we've seen this year, I think they're second in baseball and errors. Uh, I'll take league average. Like I'll take not a liability as the baseline for defense with Jaron Duran. He's I love that kid. He's uh, he's he's got a he he has that certain dry, absolute meathead. Uh, he all he thinks about is baseball and eating uh, breakfast sandwiches and crushing weights. That's it. Like we're the same <laughs> dude. He just plays. I just talk about it. Exact same people. I think that he has the mentality for a winning season. Like there are certain guys that if you play in Boston, AJ, you could probably talk about this 2014, not a fun year. Uh, but I think it's also just, he can handle it. I know that he had like the, he had some incidents last year, but he's going to learn from that. He's not a dude that's going to repeat mistakes. He's not a dude that's going to have these learning experiences and not take something from them. We saw that just from last year to this year, completely different player. And I think he's only going to continue to get better. I think the way that he he's kind of, it's, it's not the perfect comparison, but guys that played with Mookie Betts, would say like he would have like a bad round of BP, come back in the dugout and be like, man, like I suck. And like you're you're the 26th dude on the roster. You're like, Mookie, shut the fuck up, dude. Like you don't, you're one of the best players <laughs> in baseball. Like we don't need to hear you talk like that. Jaron Duran just had an incredible season. Like he was one of the leaders in doubles. This dude is going first to third faster than most people. He's swiping bags. He's making strides defensively. I think the fact that his season ended with an injury the way that it did, he's going to come back even better next year. And, 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 he, he, yeah, he's one of those dudes that's gonna, gonna, gonna keep building on his success. Well, first of all, before I blow you completely up, I enjoyed <laughs> my time with the Red Sox. It was a shame that the team was awful, but that's neither here nor there. But now, now that you're a John Henry apologist, which you're proving, <laughs> a, Dur a Duran apologist, a Tristan Cassis apologist, now you can be the real John Henry apologist again. He owns Liverpool, okay, yes. in, the in, in the Premier League. 
They're worth like fifty billion dollars. They don't. The Red either. Sox. The Red Sox can't go over the luxury tax. Fuck off, Jared. They're the <laughs> Red Sox. Okay. Just take just take Salah and sell him to Saudi. Loan him to Saudi. You make like one hundred and fifty billion dollars, and then you, you can't can put talk other the sports with me. I, I'm only a baseball guy. Is okay, this a soccer I mean, player you're talking about? Yeah, it's a soccer yeah. player, okay? But okay. he plays for Liverpool. You know who Liverpool is? I sure do. John Henry's your best friend. <laughs> oh, okay, God. they own Liverpool, okay? <laughs> They're worth like $50 billion. Uh-huh. Again, sell Salah to Saudi. They want them. You get back like $250 million. Put some of that, you know, take $20 million, $50 million. Put it in the Red Sox, and guess what? You're rich as hell. You're the Red Sox. Go over the luxury tax. Stop being an apologist. Yeah, no, I, I, I trust me. I'm not going to push back on that at all. It's it, based on how the system works. It's like the more years you go over the tax, the higher the tax becomes, which means by that point, everyone wants to go after John Henry or Bloom or whatever. You can go back to Dave Dombrowski for giving out the Chris Sale extension, uh, the Nathan Avaldi contract, which ended up working out like 21 was worth it, but mainly the Chris Sale uh, extension where it's like based on what you're getting taxed, Mookie Betts was going to make $30 million a year, but it was going to cost them $100 million. And it's like, all right, well, it's not my money. Who cares? I agree with you. Not my money. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm trying to win a championship, and I, I feel like Mookie Betts being on your team helps that drastically. But then from a business perspective, it's like, all right, well, you know, John Henry doesn't want to pay $100 million a year for one player. It's like, well, if there's one player that's worth it, it's Mookie Betts. Yeah, and they would have gotten under eventually, or even Dude, if not. You can't say when he signed Chris Sale, he wasn't worth it, because he was at the time. Yeah. And Evaldi had just come off the World Series. So it's like, oh, you know, you can't really say that now. No, and you can't keep everybody, but Mookie. No. Sale, you could have waited. Yeah, Sale, Mookie's you could have waited. Sale, Sale was not a free agent. He was not an impending free agent. He had one year. You could have played right, out 19 year. and then approached him then. They, like, they were kind of just, that happens with teams that win championships. They yeah. just, are, everyone's feeling good. And like, all right, let's start throwing around money and keeping all the guys that just were big parts of that postseason run. The Giants did it. The Giants ran into that with Crawford and Belt and those guys. Remember, they got old real quick the last couple of years. Yeah, and then they kind of all revitalized like two years yeah, ago, yeah. and then they they fell back down. The big thing though is, and, and I can say this, and, and Jared, I, I worked for the league for a while. The teams profit their freaking asses off. Every single team makes a ton of money, and you know why? Uh, if they didn't, what would happen? They would sell the team. Oh, of course. They make so much freaking money. That's why whenever whenever anyone complains about the status of the team and, and, and the luxury tax and this stuff costs money, whatever, they make so much damn money. They they also buy other properties around, which I'm sure the Red Sox are looking into, which I've heard about and read a little bit about. So, so my next question to you is, we did a lot of Red Sox here, and you cover the sport, though, in general. Who's shittier, John Henry or John <laughs> Fisher? Like those two oh owners God. to cover this year have been incredible. John, uh, or not, sorry, not John Henry. Did I say John Henry? You John, said John, 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 John I'm sorry. I messed up my Johns. <laughs> John Henry is much better than John Fisher and John Angelos. When you're seeing those two, John Angelos, first off, who is about to maybe get the Red Sox closer to the postseason based on the fact that he just basically told everyone he's not going to keep his freaking players after tanking for six years, or John Fisher, who um, infests his ballpark, raises ticket prices, and on and on. So wanted to get your take on, in my opinion, two of the bigger storylines in baseball this year. I'm probably going to go Fisher here, but I think it's because I'm more... I'm far more closer to that than most because I do Baseball is Dead with Dallas Braden. And he's a broadcaster for the A's. He's a former player for the A's. He's an ambassador of the A's. So I just... I feel like I'm much closer to that situation. And I feel like... It's more dire. It is more, I think, uh, apprehensible. It's more uh, unacceptable. You know, if you're talking about a fan experience, fans that uh, we saw that they're loyal, you know, like the, the TV numbers aren't bad. They're just not going to the games because why would you like look around the league? Like, look at look at the lineup from a couple of years ago. It's it's completely decimated and it didn't have to be. It, I, that's what one thing that I'll never quite understand is that if you're a billionaire and you want to get into owning businesses or you want to spread out your money so that you can make more money, why get into sports if it's something that you're not passionate about? I, I'll never understand that because all you're doing is just robbing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people of their passion. 
Because if you're an A's fan, like look at all these people that showed up to the reverse boycott and they're they're there to say, like, we still love the team. We just don't love what you're doing with it. And who would like there's there's not a divide. It's a complete unity in the the uh, the Bay Area. You even have Giants fans being like, listen, we've got this cross Bay rivalry type deal going on, but we're with the A's fans. Like, we don't want the A's to leave. No one wants the A's to leave. And I don't even think people in Vegas are saying like, woo, like we're so excited that we're getting a baseball team. They're like, ah, I don't know. We kind of feel bad for A's fans. Like, it, I think it's it's one of the more sadder stories in baseball this year. And I think that the 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 Angels uh, are, are responsible for why we don't, hone in more on the A's situation because that situation is even more of an abomination. That's true. Artie Moreno is stealing John Fisher's thunder. And I can tell you, and I've, I've been in Vegas a couple times since all this shit went down and people there, obviously you're just roughly polling people you come across say, yeah, we'd love to have baseball, our own team. That dude's a douche. We don't want anything <laughs> that he brings over here. I mean, that's true. John Fisher, every, every single thing that he has done is, is straight out of a movie that hasn't been made yet. Major League doesn't even do it right for what John Fisher has done to this group. You're, you're exactly right. The ballpark's nasty. He makes it like that on purpose. I mean, he's purposely trying to drive people away, raising prices, the whole deal. So, no, you're spot on. Um, and and in my mind, yeah, it's it's sad because, really, I mean, both spots deserve, deserve to have a home. So, um, I'm good. No, before we let you go, I just want you to know, the Red Sox are worth $4.5 billion. You know what their <laughs> revenue was? Last year, what was the revenue? Five hundred thirteen million. Mm. Okay, Liverpool, who they own, five point three billion. You know what their revenue was last year? Seven hundred ninety-three million. So fuck off and go over the luxury tax. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the money. <laughs> I mean, no. holy cow! No, they should be spending that's, at the highest. That's one point three billion in revenue that, between two teams at Fenway Sports. Main. That's yeah, not even counting the Penguins. They are crushing it. Yeah, they are mm-hmm. crushing it. You're right. They're doing pretty well. It would be, be doing a lot better if they had Mookie bets. <laughs> Could not agree more. <laughs> Mookie B. Yeah. And and they should throw tons of money at Otani just to at least say they tried, even if he doesn't want to go play in Boston. Right? I'm all for all players are getting tons of money. So, yeah. <laughs> Gary doesn't want Otani. I don't. I really. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? Yeah. The first yeah, no. person ever to say no, it. No, that's not true. Yep. No, it's it. true. It's true. I so I it's not because I don't love the player. I love the player. It's because I don't want to be the organization that's responsible for like breaking him. I don't want that. Wow. What? I think I think oh, if he signs Wait, I thought the oh, Angels I, broke him. He didn't even make the team photo. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, they had the stand and they had the fake Razor Ramon out there. I think what's probably going to end up happening is he'll the the deal is going to be much shorter i think this winter it's not going to be the 10 year 600 million dollar deal or whatever but say he does get something for 10 years and it just includes opt outs or opt outs and he can stay past like the three year opt out whatever it is if he's there for any extended period of time wherever it is that he goes you will see the end of his two-way status if he signs for 10 years it will end somewhere in there and there will be this uh very aggressive debate being had with baseball fans of like whose fault is it is it Shohei's fault is it father time's fault is it the organization's fault can we go back and blame the angels like i just don't want to be a, i don't want to be at the epicenter of that shit storm because it is coming for whoever signs him like he's not gonna go wire to wire as a two-way player and it's i just want to appreciate him from afar like i don't want to have to uh like analyze him or criticize him like up close i'd rather just have him be on the west coast and i can just be a fan and appreciate him wow that's a take. I mean, that's mm-hmm. strong. That's strong. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's a good way to finish. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, Jared. This was awesome, dude. Great to, All right, guys. Great to link Thank up. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. It's about damn time. Let's do it again soon. It's about damn time. You're right. You're right. We'll talk <laughs> in the off season. All right. All right. Sounds good. Cheers, brother. Thank you. You, you can follow Jared at Jared underscore Carabas. Um, he's got a few pods, including baseball is dead and name redacted pod. And like he mentioned, you can hear him. He's on the radio up there. Nesson it's all over the place. Great job covering the socks. That was fun. That's a, that's a unique take right there. I kind of want to bring that. Is Ken ready? Ken ready. Uh, he's in the green room. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's, we'll, 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 uh, stay tuned on that. I kind of want to ask Ken about that. Which part? Have you heard anybody say they don't want? No, he's the first person I've ever heard say. I want to bring that. I want to bring that to Ken. 
Um, but real quick, anyone got rays? It's kind of cloudy outside. Okay. So not I'll in Florida wear, today. I'll wear them inside. <laughs> How's the weather there, Kratzy? <laughs> Sunny and nice. Thank you. <laughs> Get it all warmed up for me. I'll be in the Northeast in about 24 hours. Always want to remind everyone. Thank you, God. Yes, exactly. No, it's in the 90s this week, I think, in New York City. Oh, yeah. One more. One more day in the 90s, then it goes into 70s. I'm okay with 90s. I got, I got Kratz's Shady Rays that I'm going to grab tomorrow. And he's going to be like, oh, I lost my pair. And then they'll send you a brand new pair, no questions asked, because that's yeah, how it works with the lost and broken replacements um, Actually, that every Scott, single pair of sunglasses is backed by. Yes, Todd? I messed up. It's going to be in the 80s till Tuesday, bro. We got some Let's time. Let's go, baby. I'll, hey, that's perfect for me. I'll bring that up. So also just wanted to call this out um, from Shady Rays. They're providing much needed support to nonprofit partners across the United States through Shady Rays Impact. Um, that includes building play sets for pediatric cancer patients and providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. They're making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. So just for the FT fam, they're giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, enter the code FOUL, F-O-U-L, for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses and try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. All right, let's get right to it. Our guy, Ken Rosenthal, joining us. Ken, great to see you. And we've got a lot to get to. I just wanted to start here. We had Jared Carabas on with us just now. And I think he's the first person, definitely on this show, that said, I actually don't want Shohei Otani on my team. I don't know if you caught any of it, but he basically said, or he did, that he didn't want him on the Red Sox, didn't want to be the epicenter of the storm of him eventually kind of aging out and not being who he is right now and not being a two-way star. I heard it, and I was surprised to hear it from Jared. You would think he'd want the action. He'd want the attention on the team, the quality of the player. And listen, he comes at it from a different perspective. It's more of a fan's perspective. But even from a fan's perspective, I don't understand why you wouldn't want Shohei Otani. Oh, we don't want to be the ones when he goes bad. Well, maybe he's going to be good for five years, or maybe he's going to do some amazing things for the Boston Red Sox. So, hey. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. It's the beauty of the sport, the beauty of our country, the beauty of everything. I just don't really follow that one. Nope, I'm with you there. Okay, so let's jump to your article first. Because um, immediately it attracts a ton of buzz. So can you explain to us your, your latest article that you put out last night about the Mets' pursuit of David Stearns, including the fact that he can now kind of legally, for baseball terms, uh, speak to other teams since he has kind of sat out the year compared to what he was doing for a while. And, and I'll just have you double down within your answer if you think Craig Council comes along with him if he do does end up with the Mets. Because we had Matt Arnold, Jim, of the Brewers on yesterday, and I kind of asked him, don't you feel like I was pretty direct? Like, if Council does come back to manage, is he with the Brewers? And he said yes, didn't he? He did. Well, we'll see about that. He has to sign a contract. And if he was going to be <laughs> signed for next year, maybe he would have been signed already. So certainly they can bring him back. And before he is at the end of that contract, right, they can sign him to an extension at any moment now. But they haven't done it. And it's almost like a player. You're this close to free agency. Why wouldn't you test it? Now, as for David Stearns, it's been no secret for quite some time now that the Mets have coveted him as their president of baseball operations. They have tried to hire a few different people for that position and have struck out, and they've been waiting on Stearns. Now, the key development in what we published last night was that as of August 1st, after the trade deadline, he was free to talk to other teams. And remember, the Mets had denied permission, or I'm sorry, the Brewers had denied permission for the Mets to interview him earlier. Now that is not a problem, and we were told, Will Salmon and I, who co-wrote the article with me, that... They are down the road with David Stearns. Multiple people told us this, that the Mets have had extensive conversations with him. Stearns also talking to other teams. Remember, he used to work for the Astros. His wife is from Houston. There's an obvious connection there, but they have a GM, Dana Brown. And unlike the Mets, it does not seem that they want to hire a president of baseball operations over him. Dana Brown, when he took the job, said one reason it's appealing to me is because it's me and the owner. I don't have a guy in between us. 
Maybe that would change if Jim Crane decided I want David Stearns, but David Stearns has been a focus of the Mets for quite some time now. He is a native New Yorker. He's a guy who grew up a Mets fan, and my understanding from people close to him is that he's re-energized. He's ready to go again. He's had a year off, and he wants to get back in the chair. Well, we roasted the White Sox for going internal, not checking and out any other candidates. Have the Mets checked out other candidates? Because everyone else is still hired and probably can't talk to other teams. Good question, Eric. And I would imagine over the last couple of years, while they've been trying to hire for this position, they have investigated other candidates. One of the problems has been they've been unable to find anyone that they found satisfactory. The question will become, yes, when he is hired, if he is hired, did they go outside? Did they interview diverse candidates? Who did they exactly talk to? And we'll find out those answers if this comes to pass. But we do know Stearns has been a focus of theirs. And unlike Chris Getz, he is an external hire. He's coming from the outside, coming from some other club. So from that perspective, it's a little bit different than the Getz situation. But at the same time, those are questions that will be asked and should be asked because you want these processes to be open. You want them to be accessible to people throughout the industry. And granted, in certain cases, the White Sox were one and the Mets might be another. They've, these teams identify who they want. And you can't tell teams not to hire who they want. But at the same time, there is supposed to be a wide search done for positions of this caliber. Ken, why didn't the White Sox have to interview anybody? Isn't there a rule in Major League Baseball where they have to go interview minorities and, and a bunch of people before they can just make a hire? They got a waiver? How do you get a waiver in Major League Baseball? Because I want to know. I wrote about this, AJ, and it's a good question. And when the White Sox made their decision, I had two candidates or guys who are working in baseball from underrepresented groups reach out to me immediately and say, hey, what was this? What happened here? No one else was interviewed? And I asked the question, and baseball does maintain guidelines, and they do enforce them. But what they require, if you're not going to interview or hire a candidate from a diverse group, what they require is a process in which you explain to the commissioner's office why you're doing what you're doing. And in the case of Getz, they promoted him from farm director. They now are supposed to replace him with a candidate from a diverse group as farm director or in a comparable position, I would imagine. So there are requirements, but the White Sox historically with high profile jobs have done quite well with diverse candidates. They've had a manager for 21 of the past 26 years who came from an underrepresented group. So with all that in mind, baseball did allow this, but they are going to be held to certain standards going forward, and seemingly they understand this. Back it's interesting, Stearns. AJ. Let yeah. me add one more thing here, because sure. this is a, it's a tricky situation. So you don't want to discourage organizations from promoting from within. Everyone within the organization wants that to happen, right? And organizations, healthy, strong ones, do that routinely. So it's a delicate balance between allowing and encouraging organizations to promote from within and requiring them to follow these processes to interview candidates from diverse groups and follow it that way. So the White Sox walked a fine line here. In my opinion, they should have opened up the process, not just to diverse candidates, but to all candidates because they just kept internal here. They just stayed internal, but that's not the route they chose. And they went through Major League Baseball. They were required to go through Major League Baseball, and they were allowed to make this hire without interviewing anyone from the outside. It's wild. The thing that always blows my mind, too, is to not at least grab intel from some of the smartest minds in the game. That I mean, I've, I've spoken to multiple Free teams. Free intel. Free That's intel. Safe. There are teams sometimes, and, and, and Ken talked about this on Fair Terror, too, is you don't want sham interviews. You don't want to just have everybody coming in when you already know what's happening, but at the same time, teams have – front runners often and they'll still bring people in for manager and for front office positions because they want to see what's going on around the league that's your best time to to go through you know go through another and team Scott, and see what's going on when i when i wrote what i did immediately there were some comments you hire the best person that is not what this is about actually it is what it's about long term and ultimately but what i'm talking about is the process itself 
if you have a process and you interview a wide range of candidates, diverse candidates, other candidates, and then you hire Chris Getz, that's fine. You follow the process. They did not follow the process. And that is my complaint here. That is the complaint of some people within the game. It's not that they didn't hire a candidate from an underrepresented background. That's not it. Hire whoever you want, but at least give these other people a chance. Give them access. And that's where the White Sox fell short. All right, so just to, to finish up on the Met situation here that brought this up with Stearns, do you feel like this is extremely likely that he ends up there? Because, I mean, most Mets fans were looking at this back when he, you know, stepped away. I mean, looking like someone who's in the prime years of what he's doing. You're like, what? What's going on here? I do feel it's likely. And he's 38. He stepped away. It seemed that he was burnt out. Maybe he was burnt out working for that team, working for that owner. We don't know the answer. But he stepped away for a reason, obviously. And these jobs are really hard. And when the general managers move on or are fired, or leave the job, whatever, in that year or two afterward, they're like new people. Same with managers, for that matter. Those jobs are quite difficult, too. And sometimes they need a break because it's 24-7, pretty much 365 for the executive types. So that could have been part of it, too, that he just needed some time to himself, to his family. But now, again, it seems that he is ready to go. And the Mets certainly are a team that has been interested for quite some time. And as we reported last night, they are down the road with him, according to several people in the game. From all my law classes that I took, I was taught not to lead the witness, okay? So I'm not going to lead you. I'm going to ask a question. I need a yes or no. Is the stolen base watered down? Yes, but I know where you're going with this, Eric, nope. and I'm going to answer it. No, hold on. You're going to have to allow the witness to have his say. The question that's come up, and it's a very fair question, is, okay, we're looking at a National League MVP race between Ronald Acuna Jr., and Mookie Betts, and one of Acuna's top credentials is the 60-plus stolen bases. And you might say, well, this is a year in which there have been already more stolen bases than last year by quite a number, several hundred. So with the new rules, yes, it is easier to steal bases. The reason why I don't know that it's a valid argument against Acuna or to hold against Acuna is because he is the league leader in stolen bases. You have to have context, right? Well, he is the one who is at the top, regardless of the rules. That's him this year. So 30, 60, if you want to diminish it because of the new rules, I understand that. But he still is quite an impressive MVP candidate, and in part because of the stolen bases. I would also point to what he's done in the first inning. I would point to his consistency month by month. Mookie's been unbelievable in the second half, wasn't quite as consistent in the first Mookie is a tremendous candidate as well. And Mookie has some things over Acuna, notably the wins above replacement. It's a metric that is an estimate, but he's got a pretty significant lead over Acuna in that. And Mookie's defensive versatility and skill at three positions, right field, second base, shortstop, these are all great attributes. My basic feeling right now is you can't go wrong with either, but when it comes to stolen bases, Eric, yeah, it's fair to say it's watered down, but at the same time, when you've got the top guy in the league, he's still doing it better than everyone else. Hey, my question to you, changing gears a little bit, the Texas Rangers, who you talked about earlier today, um, you know, they're struggling a little bit. You know, they look what looked like a great outcome for them, dominating all through the, you know, through the regular season here. There's not many more games left. Do you see them making a push, or do you see them kind of fizzling off a little bit? Because uh, to me, it's, you know, Seattle – Who's the other two here? Toronto and Texas right now. Two out of the three are going to make it. Do you see them making it? Texas fell out of playoff position last night, and it's stunning because as of August 15th, their playoff odds, and I know it's just playoff odds, it's nothing concrete, but they were 95%. They've since gone 4-14. Four and 14. They go into where they have Houston with the biggest series of the season, right? These last two games, they get outscored 27-7. to seven. They use a catcher, no disrespect, Eric, but a catcher to pitch back-to-back -back games, to finish back-to-back -back games because they're out of pitching. Their bullpen has been horrible, almost an 8 ERA in this 4-14 and, um, and 14 run. So the question then becomes, okay, there's plenty of time. 
They're a half game behind the Blue Jays. They're still only two games out in the West. They can get it together and maybe even win the division title still. Problem is that bullpen. It's been a season-long issue even after they added Chapman, even after they added Chris Stratton at the deadline. And in the big picture, it's really troubling how much they have crashed in the last couple of weeks. Look at the money they spent in the 2021-22 offseason. That was over $500 million for Seager, for Semyon, for John Gray. Last offseason, they go over $260 million. DeGrom took up most of that, but it was also Evaldi and Heaney and Martin Perez coming back. They've invested a, an awful lot. They were aggressive at the trade deadline, getting Scherzer, Montgomery. They put a lot into this, and to see it fall short, to miss the postseason, I'm not going to say it would be as disappointing as the Cardinals, the Mets, the Padres, or the Yankees, but it would be an immense disappointment considering the way that they had played up until August 15th. Can you see three teams from the NL Central making it to the playoffs? Right now, that's what would happen. The Reds are in position, and the Reds are stunning to me. And one reason I should say I believe the Rangers have hope is because of what has happened in the National League. At various points in the second half, the Diamondbacks have looked cooked. The Marlins cooked. The Reds, not good. And yet, each of these teams is right there. The Reds have all these COVID situations going on. They have injuries. <laughs> and yet, they're still fighting and they're still winning games. So, more power to them. I love watching them play with all the kids running around. And not just Dela Cruz. It's Encarnacion Strand. It's Marte. It's Spencer Steer, of course. And McLean when he's healthy. They've got a really good thing going. Can they get there? I don't know, but it looks like the Cubs are going to make it. It looks like the Brewers are going to win the division title. So, yes, three teams from the NL Central certainly is possible. Ken, since you've bailed on me and you won't do any more games with me the rest of the year, I have to ask this question now. <laughs> I know what you're asking Stanton about. Stanton hit 400 homer, his 400th homer last night. Is he a Hall of Famer if he gets to 500? Because he's probably going to get there. I mean, he's got enough time on his contract if he's healthy. Is he an automatic Hall of Famer with 500 home runs? Hall of Famer? I would say no. Wow. And so he would be the first so he would be the first one with 500 yeah. homers and not a link to steroids. Right. That right. Doesn't I know get what you're in. asking. To me a Hall of Famer is someone who starts off with 10-year dominance. Has Stanton had 10-year dominance? No. He's had a couple of big seasons. He's certainly had a lot of home runs. But he's essentially a DH right now and he's been that way for some time. It's hard to look at him as a Hall of Famer right now. Now, at the end of a career, when we have the five years to think about it, maybe we look at it differently. If you're just judging on numbers, sure, 500 home runs has always been a magic number when it comes to the Hall of Fame, except for the steroid guys. But at the same time, if you're asking me if he's deserving right now, I would have to say no. Fred McGriff didn't get in, didn't get voted by the writers initially. And he was just about at 500 home runs. What was he, like 493, I think? Three. Fred McGriff had a brilliant postseason record. He mm -hmm. was a different kind of player. He was more durable. There, there mm -hmm. were things that Fred McGriff offered. Frankly, he should have been in a lot sooner, in my opinion. I voted well, for you him. You didn't vote for him. It's your fault. I did vote for him, AJ. Go back <laughs> to the all public. And he's got the edge over Stan, too. Even if just, I mean, I'm just looking quickly at, like, baseball reference war. Because, obviously, you know, he just blitzes you with a question like this, Ken. But, you know, 44-ish for Stanton, it looks like. And he's a negative war player this year, by the way. And, and let's see, Fred McGriff is in the 50s, I know. 53, I think, for him. So, and it's not I'm the be-all, end-all. but I am certain that if he gets to 500 and we're looking down the line, that a number of writers will say, yes, Hall of Famer, that he has the numbers. To me, it's not quite that simple. And I like Giancarlo Stanton as a guy. It's nothing like that at all. We're just talking about the player. And I just don't see it. I don't know that many fans would see it that way. Stanton has more homers already and more RBIs and a higher OPS in the playoffs than Fred McGriff is, but – we we we, aban we we ambushed you by this one. So. How many how many at bats does Fred McGriff have in the playoffs, and how many at bats does Stan have in the playoffs? Two hundred and one hundred and eighty-eight and ninety-six for mm. Stanton. So that's almost twice as many. 
I'll no. take Fred McGriff's postseason record. I'm with you, Ken. Tell him, baby. No, no, I'm no. with you. No, no, I'm saying Stanton. Stanton has 96, and Fred McGriff has 188. That's the what playoffs? I'm saying. Yeah, right. that's what he's saying. You're saying because he, he, even though he has the same number of home runs and RBIs in half the at-bats. You're saying in the playoffs. In the playoffs. Fred McGriff is a pretty good postseason player. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, I gambush you, Ken. It's fun doing it, though. No, that's okay. <laughs> hey, hey, AJ, you know what? Actually, that's I just a great thought question. it was. I just thought that's it was relevant question. because he hit his 400th homer last night, and, no and I've always though. wondered, like, is it an automatic? Do you think is he auto- is in? AJ, you think he's in? I, oh man, it's it's like what Ken was saying. Like, it's tough. It's like he ha- he he basically just hits home runs, right? Like, there's not a lot of. I mean, got an MVP, but it's like, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's such a, it's such a good argument on both sides that that's why it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens if he gets. Now, if I answered it like that on TV, if AJ posed the question to me on Fox and I answered it like that, Todd, you know what he would have said? Give me an answer, man. Yeah, exactly. Tell him, tell Tell him, tell him, Ken. Tell his ass. I don't have a vote. If I had a vote, I'd give you an answer. But unlike Ken, who has votes and all these things, he never gives you an answer because he's like, wait on no. my Twitter. Put, he's like, wait till I tweet out my ballot. Then you'll know my answer. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not. It's a fun question to talk about, but it's not a relevant question until five years exactly. after he retired. You know what, he's not Ken? retiring anytime soon. Ken, Ken I would have asked. You could have asked Stanton in person, Yankees, Red Sox next Thursday. But instead, you highfalutins took the Rays Orioles. So, you know, I'll ask him when I see him. I believe, AJ, that was an executive decision that I had. Uh, uh, you just wanted to go back home to Baltimore. I get it. The reason we created this show is to find out exactly where Fox places AJ and Ken each week. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad we got that settled. And now we know why AJ brought up the question. So, no, it was good, though. It's good, clean fun. Ken, thank you very much. We'll talk to you. Where are we next week? Thanks, guys. See you. Cheers. All right, good stuff. That, that was good. And I'm sure a lot of Yankee fans will want to see that and hear that, you know? Well, no, I mean, I, I didn't mean to ambush him, but just because of what happened, I don't know. It's a weird – it's it's like what Todd said. Like, Todd, what do you think? Is he in if he gets to 500? I don't think he's in right now. No, but, no not no, right now. Gets, no, right now he's short. No, no, no. But if, I'm saying if, if he gets if to 500 – plays four more years and gets, you know, 25 ish a year, 25 homers a year, right. It's <laughs> – See? Stuff. It's a hard question because I mean he uh, 500 homers was auto. You I, were I, auto in. I think he's in if he gets 500. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's hit That's baseballer. Time Kraft, to, wait. Hold on. Crash. Lots of hits. Oh, no, no, still. no. But Crash can. I want Crash's answer. Yes. 100. Okay. percent Because I think the whole like, oh, is he dominant? He was a guy that you feared in the lineup for that team throughout that whole time, whether they were good or not. During his <laughs> during his Eight years before he went to the Red Sox, went to the Yankees, and even the Yankees, he hasn't been awful. He just the last two years haven't been good. I tell you this, and, and I think he's one of the best power hitters we've ever seen. I would have rather faced him than Yelich. Okay, mm. that's Pitch, fair. Pitch, pitchability wise, <laughs> wait, he was much wait, more real, pitchable to real him quick. And also, I want to remind well, everyone, even, even back then, even like Real Muto or Zuna, Zuna. Sorry, mm-hmm. I mean Stanton was like, I mean he was he was the guy. No, no, I'm saying I would have rather faced Stanton because there was more hole. There's more holes in that. Now, if he gets hot, there was no holes. Right. But if, but if he, he was, was the guy there, <clears throat> no, he was the guy. But what I'm saying is, like, if you had a guy that knew what they were doing, mm-hmm. you you could pitch to Stanton, like Yelich and those other guys. There was more danger zones. I mean, Stanton, right. listen, if he hit it, I mean, we, I watched him one night off Shelby Miller hit one out there in the fifth deck in center field. It was like 742 feet. I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, like, they have, like, four decks. He hit the top deck, and we were like, holy. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. This might be our caller later because we're on AMP right now, and you can get on the app for free and talk to us, which we're going to do in a few minutes. But just wanted to throw this out there. Doug Johnson goes, who's, who's been active in the chat today. You guys voted Harold Baines in the Hall of Fame. Get out of here. I don't know if he's talking. He's not talking to Ken because the writers didn't vote him in. You that, guys, was the, that was Jerry Reinsdorf, Tony La Russa. Yeah. That was, in the Veterans Committee. <laughs> that was the old dudes. So what? I'm serious. I know. It was. And it was. That was who did it. It was the Veterans Committee. It was committee. his friends. Yeah. It, was, it was questionable. Listen, Harold Baines is one of the best human beings. He's great. So nice. He's great. But and, his numbers are not Hall of Fame. And he also had kidney transplant? No, no, no. Great dude. Recently? But we don't, we don't do that. But that doesn't mean you get it. No, I'm, I know. I'm just saying. Harold, I love you. Buddy. We're going to have fun in the wintertime. Let's do our baseball or viral hit of the week. Listen up. 
came down to it a week before the day that I told them I was going to start and then uh, start on the road and then make one more start at home and call it quits and fly out the next day to Hawaii. And the last day I had to cancel all the plans was the day that the Reds called and signed me. So somebody was looking out for me. Um, but yeah, it was, this has been a roller coaster, but it's, it's been awesome. This is my guy right here. Michael Marriott got called up in 2014 with the Royals. I ended up turning around in 17, hitting a homer off of him. And this is the only reason I wanted to show this so I could say I hit a homer off of this guy. No, <laughs> to say like, like these are thoughts that go through people's minds in the minor leagues. Is Michael Marriott going to win the Cy Young next year? No. And the game is talked about so much. We just talked about Stanton's 400. We talked about Ellie De La Cruz doing what he did to win the game. There is more Michael Marriott's in the minor leagues yep. than there are Ellie De La Cruz's and Giancarlo Stanton's. Like, and to see him being honest about the fact that like he was going to quit. It wasn't thinking about it. He had plans. He had a flight scheduled to quit. And he gets called up to the big leagues. It is such a – it's to me, it's something that needs to be celebrated because it is happening all the time. And there's plenty of times guys don't get called up to the big leagues. And they do quit, and their careers are over. And he was really honest in this situation, and he is an absolute peach of a human being. Well said, brother. That's it, man. You said it right. <laughs> That's a remarkable story. And for that kid, man, good for him. I think he needs a text from Todd Father. He's a red. Well, we'll see him pretty soon. If that is true. Some people don't know about that, but it's a good teaser. We will see him pretty soon. We'll get to, you'll get to shake his hand in person. No, that's awesome, though. I love that. Um, and as you can see from some of the comments, because sometimes we'll rip it on Baseballer, but I did want to you know cover a cool story like this and really give credit to Kratz here. But Landon in the comments, how can you be not be romantic about baseball? You know, Love to see a great story, all of that. So... Um, really cool to point out some of those kind of uh, stories in baseball that pop up every year. Drew Maggi was an awesome interview earlier this year. Remember that? Yep. Yep. That was really cool when he got called up. All right, good stuff. Okay. We're going to hit slap hands with five minutes to go. So, oh, before that, real quick, baseballer, give him a follow, especially on IG. You'll be one of many hundreds of thousands, and also bsblr.com. Check out some merch on their end. Our friends over at Baseball are hooking us up with cool clips that go viral, so we talk about them. That's what we do. And now we're really versatile. We talk to the people, oh, not gosh. just in the YouTube chat. <clears throat> so let's uh, hit slap hands. In is this is this caller is this caller going to be can't say first time all the time or first this is literally the first first time, time long time first you time can say long time, time. You can no, be first time don't never say that time. don't say that why not no say that don't say the what Scott said why because that's not that's not part of our show that's part of, <laughs> that's part of somebody else's show no no but that, that's there's a lot of every radio now. yeah they say it on every radio show now I will say well the like, only one I think of is you know yeah. what? Well, yeah, you got the OGs that that kind of started the hype. And you know I was what? actually called an OG you yesterday you on the show. I was called an OG. If you were you don't wondering. want those people bl hitting this up because it'll be an all out craziness. It'll be a battle. It. Yeah, I need well, that in my life. Well, we talk to real people in baseball. Let's slap hands. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, boom, boom, boom. All right, baby. So we are on AMP for the first time today, and we will be doing this regularly. So if you want to listen to the show live and you're on the go, you can do that in the AMP app. And we are going to bring in a caller coming up in a sec. Also, you can join the AMP community. It's free. You create your own show or listen um, wherever you are. Follow at Foul Territory. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are we, uh, we're, we're going to bring in our first ever caller here for a question. We covered a lot today. 
I hope we get to dump it. <laughs> and also, when you come on, very simple rules. I want to know your name. Should we say where they're from? No. We can create the rules. You yeah, want to know where they're from? Yeah, why let's know where they're from. They, they, they got to remember to mute first before their name. Should we ask them something else? Like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> like, what's your favorite team? <laughs> okay, fine. Your Who's name? your favorite host? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't want to embarrass not? anyone. I don't want to embarrass everyone. <laughs> <laughs> because for the betters out there, Scott will have life everybody, winning. all his four friends calling if, every day. If you're, changing into, their name. if you're into winning your locks and you, you want to hit on 11 of 13, then oh I'm your God. guy. I'm your guy right now. I pick, right. I pick Scott's locks, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Um, you did yesterday, <laughs> FT Heater. That was all you. All right, let's bring in our first ever guest on AMP. Say who you are, who's your favorite team, and make sure you unmute on there, please. What's going on, guys? Uh, my name's Aiden. Uh, I'm a Yankees fan. I'm from Jersey, but currently calling from the Bronx. So um, you guys gave Todd a little bit of uh, shit earlier for saying that the Yankees could still make a push. Now, he's not completely wrong. They're only seven and a half games out, and they face the Blue Jays twice in the next month and the Red Sox once in a four-game series. So it's not completely out of the realm of the possibility that they could leap the Red Sox and Toronto. So what do you guys think about that? Preach, preach, brother. Oh, preach, baby. Hold up, hold up. Wait, where did he say he was from? Jersey, Jersey. but he lives in the Bronx. Yeah, so let me see. This is currently Todd's cousin calling in. <laughs> <laughs> so Aiden Frazier. He's a huge uh, Yankee fan. They can make a run. Woo. Oh man! So the Yankees are set. Wait, wait, wait. Ready seven for this? and a half out. Wait, wait, wait. Guess who else is seven and a half games out? Padres. I'm in a group with a bunch of fans, for, you know, mostly cousins and some friends growing up, and they go, "I, I got it's the Mets, by the way." And they go, <laughs> "Mets are going to make a run they're, too." They're still going with me. Yesterday, they were like, "Would be hilarious if Mets made the playoffs," and they're like percentage chance because they always ask me like as if you know i know what i'm talking about and i go is there a number below zero hey the padres are only six and a half out let's throw them in there too true red sock red sock where are the nats five? at where are the nats at the nats are far <laughs> behind oh uh, no now they're 10 back because of that recent losing oh, yeah. streak so pirates are only eight out let's put them in there hey, listen today. listen listen aiden you're not wrong brother keep riding that train crazier things have happened have they I don't, to, I don't know what it would be, but there's got to be something. What's I don't know if that's Aiden's crazier. still. I don't know if Aiden's still on or not, but man, just start cheering for the Giants. Aiden, I'm, I'm tipping my cap to you, brother. I'm a Mets fan. Oh, Aiden's still that's on there. He's a well, yeah, you, he's you know, on. you got to be Mets and Jets and Yankees and Giants. You can't do both. You can't be that way. No, that's not true, uh, dude. You're well, not from up there. You can't I'm talk born in New York, son of a bitch. I know what I want. You won't even step foot in Jersey without smog all over. Hey, the place. let the caller talk, man. Aiden was trying to refute why he's a Met, Yankees and Jets fan. That that's how I was brought up. My dad and my uncle were Yankees fans, and then my my uncle just randomly decided he wanted to be a Jets fan, and the rest is history. And I've kind of been suffering with that choice for a long time until this year. Well, the Yankees, the Yankees season is history, bud. Sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Thank Thanks, Aiden. Aiden. Thank you, Aiden. Good call. And congratulations on being our first congratulations caller. Congratulations. I'm sorry your Thank you. You're related to Todd. Thank you, baby. Thanks, AJ Appreciate will never you. forget his first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are the chances a guy from Jersey in the Bronx is like, I'm a Yankee fan. They're still alive. Go, Todd. That's actually way more positive, Todd Father, than most Yanks fans right now are pissed, you know, because they're used to winning. Ain't nobody talking from Florida, but that's okay. (laughs) So, hey, the Rays are in. Um, Just for everyone to see one more time, um, you can you can join Amp, and and we'll do this at the end of shows to get some uh, some feedback from the crowd. Join Amp, follow at Val Territory. Super simple, and you can listen to us wherever you are. And you can join us if you're lucky. All right, Kratats, what do you got, Mr. Green? As a as a Blue Jay coming up, like you'd go over to Big League Camp and you get an actual fitted St. Patty's Day hat instead of the 
bootleg one year that I went up to big league camp and they gave, they gave us these. I can't even find it. I'll, I'll wear it another day. I'll wear it another day. The, the bootleg Velcro ones in the back and you'll see which, which team wore those, but you go over to big league camp. I wasn't invited, but you go over and you get these fitted hats. You can only really wear them one day a year. So I can't save all my St. Patty's day hats for, St. Patty's, Patty's Day. Day. <laughs> well, you can. I mean, knowing you know, knowing that we'll be here for for years and years, you could just save one for each year for St. Patty's Day. I, I got to say, here. I did not expect Blue Jays when you turned the cap around. Did you? No, I got others. I thought it was like his high school because it doesn't have like the logo on the front, like the MLB yeah, logo or anything. True. true. Yeah, right, it was an Eastern together. Mennonite. <laughs> um, we, we can hit the music and let everyone know that uh, if you want to listen to Tom Glavin on Legends Territory, who actually talked about the Hall of Fame voting and, and the, the steroid dudes um, with AJ and me, it was cool. Good conversation. Talked about Acuna. That's premiering also on YouTube tonight at 6 o'clock Eastern time. We've got Brock Star back in the mix with us. Brock Holt. Uh, Todd Father's back on Friday. We'll be up Borgata the next two weeks on Fridays if you want to see us. Russ Dorsey back on Thursday. We got uh, the Locked on Angels pod host, John Frisch, joining us on Thursday, as in tomorrow. Are we, are we sure, that's a, good, are we sure that's a good idea? Oh, yeah. We'll check if he still has a pulse. And Lance Lynn, Dodgers superstar, except for his last start, joining us also on Thursday, FT Live. Always fun. See you then. Rockies went 21-1 and 1 in 2007. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>